Glass, what do you mean you're not healing anyone? I thought you were the life cleric here. <laughs> yeah, the life cleric. The taker of life cleric. Hey. It's called preventive medicine. It's best to kill the enemies before they hurt you. Exactly. The best defense is a good offense. If the enemy's dead, they're controlled, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Obviously. So, <clears throat> if we are all good now... I'm going to change my name tag. I can never remember off the top of my head. All right, there we go. And time you just get updated now. For all. So, it is a rather cold afternoon this day as <clears throat> the hubbub in the front area of the guild, the job board region, is a little quiet right now. And most of the people who came by have come and taken their missions already. They, let's see, they are all off on their adventures in the cold, snowy out, in the cold, snowy land of the loon right now. But, Glass, you find yourself here a little bit later, walking through the, walking through the guild to the job board. Where one in particular catches your eye, you heard a few things about it already. Some bad catacomb issue going on under the town of Adverge. And it seems to match the letter that uh, has been spoken about. And you go to take it, opening it to read the letter that is in game one, if you would please read that aloud to everyone. All right, it says, Dear Forge Concordance, I have heard tales of your qualified members and seek to hire them. Adverge is an old town in need of some fixing, and I know just the spot to start. Our catacombs are a bevy of untapped resources, tainted by an old, dark past, and we need them cleared out. Signed, <clears throat> Lady Wilmina of Will the Council of Adverge. Wilhelmina. <laughs> Ah, yes. <clears throat> and included in that map is, I mean, included in that letter is a little map pointing you in the direction. It appears that the town is just east of uh, Viscala, a short distance, just along the So, But it's a pretty rough-looking place to be. You are informed to bring at least five other people with you. But first, can we have a brief description of your character? Sure, yes. Glass is like six foot nine, six foot ten ish uh half work. He wears half plates. He's got a huge axe that he never uses anymore because he's also got a huge gray sword, uh made of a black, mysterious, unknown metal that he's killed plenty of foe with. Uh under his armor you would see plenty of lashings from old scars from lashings. Uh he, you can't really see his face because he's always wearing a helmet, but under the helmet now you can see glowing red eyes because he's so cool and <laughs> spent like, I felt like spending some gold to be extra edgy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's pretty chill dude. He likes to punch down on missions a lot. Makes him feel stronger than he is. Uh, and yeah, he's ready to go on this mission too. So there are a a few people that you can see around. There's not too many folks to pick from, but who do you go to first? Well, I've done missions with Real and Tim before, but uh, Real was here first. So let's, I walk over to Real and say, hey, Real, buddy. How are you, man? You ready to go on another mission? Ready to Real will look up and be like, he'll uh, give Glass a warm smile. Be like, yeah. And Poofer. His little owl companion, the tawny owl, will make a little. Can you please give a brief description of yeah. your character? Uh, Real is a fairly. He's tall, not as tall as Glass, definitely. He probably looks short <laughs> next to him. Uh, he's about six feet. He's a high elf who has very dark, um, very long hair tied into a ponytail behind his back, and <clears throat> he's got a very fancy coat that looks like it's um, sort of stuffed with this feathery down. It's very, it looks very like a very warm coat. 
and he just wears this sort of easy smile on his face most of the time. Usually, uh, you can usually find him uh, messing around with his little familiar poofer, who is a tawny owl. Yes, the nice little owl right here. The happy little owl. And with him in tow, who are you going to approach next, Glass? Uh, Let's Um, go over to Tim. All right, Tim. All right. So Tim is a well-built, tanned skin man in his mid-twenties. His skin is wrinkled and taut from uh, skin damage too much time in the sun. He smells faintly of the sea, and he has a shield with a cloud with two thunder, uh, two lightning bolts coming, the sign of his deity. He is a friendly dude, and he's actually Tim the Fourteenth. He has a, a long lineage and heritage of uh, sailors, and if you get him started on his family tree, he will go. He will talk your ear off for hours on end. But otherwise, <laughs> he tries to be friendly and approachable. All right, thank you very much. So yes, you see this large, intimidating-looking man with two gleaming red eyes out of his little helm, and his friend Real approaching you. And the looks of it, Lenari is standing next to you at this moment, Tim. And Glass, you can see that. Do you know this person? <clears throat> so Hello? Glass introduces himself. <laughs> hey, how are you? Doing all right, how are you? I'm doing good. Do you know this person here beside you? Um, Wait, have you actually, have you ever met each other? Glass and Tim, yeah. Yeah, we we have ran you, jobs together. Have any of you met Lenari though? Real no, has met Lenari. No, Lenari's just fucking standing around being gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> Real, how about you? Like, I don't know anybody else around here. Uh, Real is actually already going over to Lenari. And sort of does that thing where he puts his hand on her shoulder. Actually, he puts his hand around her shoulder to be like, Lenari, how you been? She just punches him in his gut and goes, hands Ow. off. <laughs> so, can <laughs> Lenari please tell us what your character looks like briefly? <laughs> yeah, Lenari is a girl you would see. She wears clothes of Daloon, but not from Daloon. They are strange. They have strange runic symbols on them. And the most prominent thing you would notice is that she has a crown on her head, a crown of pure crystals jutting out. Part of it is broken off and fallen and dull. She has pink hair that falls down into a braid, eyes that crackle like embers, and she doesn't have much on her. And she stands at about... Let me look at what I put down. She stands about 5'8". Yeah, really, uh, like, told her stomach and is like, she's, she's a good one, guys. We need to bring her along. And when she speaks, you could hear she speaks in very broken common and says, Need burning? Yeah. We'll come. And <laughs> there are still two more people you need to take along, though, as this mission has requested six. We already need to approach Rio and say, Hey, buddy, looks like you're getting up for something. You need a cleric by any chance? Always. Uh, Rin, uh, sorry, Re- Riordin. <laughs> Riordin is a tall and slender wood elf, plain looking, green eyes with long blonde hair flowing past the shoulder, a grim expression on his face, and a large shield with uh, blue edges and a white star in the middle. All right. <clears throat> so, Glass, you see this uh, cleric, Riordin, approaching you, and there is one other person in the guild hall at this moment, Morks. And you see this group of people kind of collecting together, Morks. <clears throat> Would you like to step forward and introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Morks. Uh, I'm a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a paladin. I'm about four foot nine. So I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> nice, short, and simple. Keep it sweet. <laughs> Well, glad to have you. We, we do need some more. Um, I what were you trying to say there, Morks? I, I couldn't hear you. you. Yeah, come on, cough it, Nam. He looks just quite evil. In the name of the Dragon King Bahamut. Ah, oh, very nice. Perfect. And you have collected this nice little team, though. 
<clears throat> as you all peer out the entrance of the guild, you see the snow falling already, the sky a little gray. It's probably going to be a bit of a cold journey up. But alas, you are all prepared to set out. And it is to Daloon that we go, the map. From the Guild Hall, you travel north to the town of Haroon and to the city of Ascala. Though it is drenched in snow the whole way, of course. And as you arrive at the city, you see on the outskirts the various activities going on as people try to quickly put together the feast that everyone knows is going on at this point. Though this is not where you are stopping. As you take a short trip to the east from Viscala itself, traveling not far from the So, where you eventually come across a large and rather open field where you see vast empty fields of f farm fields that are covered in white powdery snow, their little houses just as decorated in the, in the fluffy white goodness. And in the distance, at the center of all of these farms, is a walled town of rather considerable size, though it's old and kind of decrepit looking at this point. The stony walls are smooth from the wind, and you can see grime and dirt at the edges, even through the white snow that tops the little towers. And in the center of the town, just past the walls, you see a magnificent, but just as fitting to the rest of the town, rather dreary-looking castle that sits just right there, peacefully and quietly. But it is not this wonderful town that you're going to, as the rather quiet people all stare at this group of adventurers coming along, looking quite colorful compared to the <clears throat> drab individuals of Adberg. You all head close to the town before splitting off down a different road as the map has indicated, following it through winding small hills to inevitably reach a place with a little actual more life. As you see some cows and sheep walking through the snow, looking for anything to eat, nibbling on hay here and there, and a few farmhands tending to them, you approach a nice-looking manor that looks a bit newer than the rest of the town, though age still wears at the edges of this fine establishment. <clears throat> and as you approach, you are greeted by a young half-elf who just smiles seeing all of these adventurers. Ah, a third party of great adventurers come to grace us! How wonderful! You hear him shout from near the front door of this place as he comes to greet all of you. Are you from the Forged Concordance? Yes, in fact, we are. <clears throat> Can I please see the letter? Yeah, here you go. I'm guessing the you're not Wilhelm me and not. Um, <clears throat> it is a formality, yes. Uh, thank you. And you see him snatch up this, this letter and he reads over it. Those eyes keep flicking up at all of you, beaming. Though he looks a little tired, this half-elf boy with little bags under his eyes. He seems like he's looking at legends, almost. <clears throat> and once he has read over the letter, he ushers you all to come quickly. Staying out in the cold is not fun. Please, let's go. Into the warmth. Into the warmth. And he leads you to the front of the house, where you find a much older-looking elf, and I do mean an old-looking elf, waiting there for all of you. His wrinkly face kind of cur furls into a little frown as he looks at all of you. <clears throat> I assume you're the latest bunch, aren't you? Uh, have the others told you anything about what you're getting into? Absolutely nothing. No. Well then, it looks like we'll have a nice little discussion ahead of us now. <clears throat> the name is Suvok, by the way. It's a pleasure nice to, to meet me. all of you. He is... Oh, Yes, he is a wrinkly old elf, uh, a wrinkly old high elf specifically, with white stringy hair and very fine red silky robes that reach down all the way to his feet, though it looks a little dirty and rugged down there at the bottom. 
and he carries with him a long and magnificent white staff made of some sort of shiny bark, it seems. <clears throat> Though once you are all here, he ushers you inside to the building, the house proper. The main foyer, uh, foray, foyer, foyer of the house is quite expansive, and it looks so warm inside. It is warm. You can feel the heat from several fireplaces burning around this place, doors open to let the heat flow around. Though it is not in any particularly magnificent place that you are taken, as you are led off the side down a wind down a slightly narrow hall until you eventually reach the end where you are led into this room here a messy study that looks quite different from the rest of the house almost like someone who's been living in here for the past several weeks and that might not even be that far off as you see this woman with red with uh rather sh Long red hair, a few white streaks in it, turned to face all of you. It is quite messy right now, and you see that her dress looks a little um, disheveled as well, but she smiles seeing all of you. Ah, hello and welcome to all of you. I am Lady Wilhelmina, and I beseech all of you to please have a seat and get comfortable. She, uh, she ushers you all to one of the armchairs in this nice study, or, if you would prefer, the long couch sitting against the wall opposing the burning fireplace currently. I'll uh, just lean against the wall for now. <laughs> she glasses <laughs> a bit big for this room. The Ordin will stand as well. <clears throat> she almost seems a little... Um, you kind of see one of her eyes twitch a little when you kind of just stand. Oh, that's fine. If you want to stand, I under I understand if you want to stand. The Ordin will point I mean, the rest to the of you shield. Can say, I don't want to take up all the space as a thing. The Ordin will point to the shield and say it gets in the way. Alright, fine. If you guys don't want to sit, I'll sit. <laughs> I'll try to be courteous. Well, if you all get comfortable, can I please uh, get the names of the individuals who are here? I, I am not familiar with any of you. The last time I got one familiar face. Uh, yeah, you can call me Glass. Yeah. All right. Greetings, Glass. I am Riordan. To... And greetings to you, Riordan. Riordan? Oh, my. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Greetings, Riordan. And the dwarf fellow here, what is your name? Orcs. Morks. That's what your name was. I thought I heard someone. Ah, and you, young lady, what is your name? Lenari. Hmm. A nice name. And you, Mr... Tim. Tim the 14th. Uh, you probably heard of my family. We've been sailors for a very long time. The name's very memorable. In fact, if you have a minute, I can tell you about my whole lineage. <laughs> well, perhaps we will have time to talk about it, though there are a few more pressing matters, of course. I am glad to meet you, Tim the 14th. Just between you and I, I'm Wilhelmina the 7th. Oh, <laughs> we must share family stories then. I'm sure you have yes. a lot you can tell me. Yes, yes, of course. Sometime we must. But for now, I bet all of you would like something nice, wouldn't you? And she rings a little bell on her desk. And a little more than a minute later, a servant comes in holding a tray with hot tea and cookies on it for everyone to enjoy. It is laid out on a little end table just in front of the couch. Don't get greedy now. Be a little for everyone, if you would. <clears throat> yeah, I'll take a few. She's then going to take a seat behind her desk and put her hands together as she looks with a smile to all of you. You look like a particularly hearty group, which is good because where you are going is a very dangerous place. As you know from the message, I am seeking to reopen the catacombs beneath this town. 
Adverge is an old place. Uh, some used to say it was like the second jewel of Dulun, though. If that was ever the case, it was so long ago that it's faded into nothing more than a memory or a legend. But what is real are the riches that sit beneath our town. There is gold, silver, iron, and who knows what else. According to other adventurers who've come through here before you, there's some sort of strange building at the center of the catacombs. And who knows what bevy of knowledge could be in there as well. But it's, of course, not exactly a friendly place. It had to be closed off for a reason. <clears throat> Chamberlain Suvok, if you would. The older elf steps forward, clearing his throat and looking to all of you. About 150 years ago, there was a necromancer that came through here. He was the servant of a powerful, of a very powerful dark force long ago. But when his master fell, he was forced to hide, and he went to the catacombs beneath the town for that. Though inevitably, the forces of good caught up to him, and in a last desperate attempt to take out everything he could, he performed some dark ritual that obliterated him his followers, and those who followed them into the catacombs. It did something to the place, tainting it, turning it into un... To, to, eh, what the, turning <clears throat> it into desecrated grounds. And ever since then, monsters and the dead have begun walking through them. It became too dangerous, and we had to seal it off a long time ago. But unfortunately, it seems something's starting to leak out a little bit. And it's becoming too much of an issue for us to just keep avoiding. And when he says that, Lady Wilhelmina speaks up now. Which is exactly why we need to prove to the rest of the council that it is worth opening and taking care of the issue beneath this town. The others just want it to go away. They want to forget about that bad history that our town has. But it won't be forgotten. And they need incentives is why I've hired all of you, and I can provide and ensure you it will be worth your time if you can please bring back either 15 deposits of iron or five deposits of silver or three deposits of gold. And if you can somehow bring back all of them or more, I can assure you there will be extra rewards in store for all of you. Yeah, do you mind writing that down? Yeah. yeah. Um, Those 15 iron, and what? Don't worry, you'll actually get something for that. Okay. Um, That's all you wanted us to do. <clears throat> of course, the coming along with that is taking care of any nasty things you find down there, of course. That would go That's second true. nature. Though, hmm. there are a few extra things that I would like to speak privately to all of you. Once we get there, of course. Well, yeah, I, I suppose. What I'm getting at is uh, necromancy is a bit like, uh, how do I put it, an infection, I guess? If Necromancy is definitely a very powerful school of magic. What are you getting at? Well, I mean, uh, you don't want us to attempt to take care of what's causing it. Now you see, that I already know is uh, unfortunately a bit beyond your group. Well, there are steps you can take to help make it better, it will require more financial incentive from the council to get something like that going. Hence why we're doing this. A delve into the catacombs to prove that it is worthwhile to the rest of the town rather than just sitting on it until it bursts. That would be bad for everyone. Well, okay. I mean, I'll do what you're paying me to do. <clears throat> Lady Wilhelmina sits forward a little eagerly. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Mm, that was my question. So, I'm, I'm just going to Anyone else? Questions. Lenore just yawns and sits by the door and says, tell me when needed. Not good at talking or listening. 
<laughs> ah, a real go-getter over there. But, please, I, if you do... I, I, yes? I have a question. Um, what kind of monsters and undead were, uh, like, do you know any by name, or can you describe them to us? <clears throat> well, the Chamberlain steps forward. <clears throat> There have been, of course, undead creatures that have been encountered down there, as reported by the last groups that came through, as well as strange floating eye creatures that seem somewhat similar to a beholder, but from what I've heard, they are not. They are smaller and weaker and not necessarily the same, but that's what they equated them to, from what I heard. And on top of that, there are apparently some sort of strange mutant, aberrationist creatures deep in that building that Lady Wilhelmina mentioned in the center of the catacombs. All right. And if I'm not mistaken, the last group mentioned encountering a couple of uh, slime creatures as well. Uh, what kind of slimes exactly do you... They said something about large, black, tarry-looking entities. Did they mention anything about it melting metals? Yes, they certainly did. And I saw from my own eyes that uh, they weren't lying. Uh, oh, fantastic. Well, well hopefully they, they cleared out all of them. <laughs> I guess I better get an extra rape here. Well, by any chance and by luck, you won't have to deal with them. That was seemed like a very unlucky event to happen to those group of uh, the last Delver, shall I oh, say. I wouldn't worry about that. I am quite unlucky. <laughs> yeah. So, from the look of it, uh, <laughs> who all's a, who all, who all's a, who all's good at magic around here? B between us. Uh, the Ordin is quite good at magic. Well, I know about you, Riorin. Tim's pretty uh, well, adept at, at some clerical magics. Yeah. He can make uh, things go boom pretty good. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to show everyone... I want to like open up my spell book and show everyone a particular spell, a protection from evil and good. Be like, you, you guys have this, right? Yes. Cool. It might help us a lot. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, that is a very good thing to bring. Hopefully it won't be... You know, it's a rather expensive spell to keep up all the time, though. Hopefully it won't be necessary too often. Right. <clears throat> if none of you have any further questions, I can lead you out to the catacombs now. Going once... Is there no, any place good. inside where we might be able to... Sorry. We might be able to rest. From what I hear, some of the places that you already passed through tend to be much safer going back. You'll probably be able to find somewhere to rest if you've managed to ensure the location you recently visited was, you know, adequately safe. Okay. Going once, twice, thrice. No more questions. We are off for now. Adventure and, ho! And once everyone is gathered together, the Chamberlain leads you all out with Lady Wilhelmina giving you all a wonderful little, a wonderful wide bow, actually, as she is hoping great things. You are led back out into the snow and a, a fair distance away from the town and the manor towards what looks like this old, decrepit building that barely stands any more than a foot tall with what's left. It looks like it's been cleared out recently, though. Probably the first time the adventurers came through. But the real fetching thing here is the large-looking stone vaults sitting just on the ground. Um, can all of you ping me your languages real quick? I know Riord, uh, Riordan would be able to understand Elvish because he's an elf. Yeah, I can understand Elvish, um, Elvish, Dwarfish, and Tadman. I would have laughed if somehow Riordan did not have <laughs> elf. 
So those of you that do understand Elf can see etched into this vault is very fine elven rune, runic magic of some sort. That is a strong, very strong sealing spell. But it looks as though it is worn away over time, becoming weaker and weaker. The runes are barely noticeable anymore. <clears throat> as you can see, the issue has become quite uh, substantial. But there is definitely some belief that this can be taken care of before it overflows. Which is why I'm here to ask you my personal part in this, my personal stake. At the middle, the center of that strange building down there is some sort of dark essence that seems to be keeping it all held together. Or at least there's... Hmm, there might be more than one from what I, from what I believe. But the other groups that have come through here so far have not been able to successfully defeat and cut whatever this dark string connecting all of this together is. Perhaps you can all prove more apt at that. Ah, see, that's I can... what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at earlier. What can you tell us about it? Unfortunately, I don't have much to go on. The area is unscryable from even the most powerful magics, and the only group that managed to get that deep was nearly wiped out to the last man. They had to make a hasty escape at the last second to even hope to get out alive. Mm. They didn't bring any bring back any information. Unfortunately, their stay was a little too short because of that. They didn't get a whole lot of time to investigate around. The second group bowed out just when they had finally arrived at the <clears throat> at the strange building. Like I said, they had a rather nasty time with two slimy creatures. Gotcha. And on top of that, <clears throat> if you can slay it, I can provide you with a fine little bonus and something extra from me to all of you as well. Well, at least to one of you as well. But your real mission here is Lady Wilhelmina's. And I understand if you wish to avoid the entity at the center, whatever they may be or whatever it might be, because so far it has proven too dangerous. If you prove to be the first ones to deal with it, that will, well, that will definitely be something special. <laughs> you think it might be more powerful than, a, like, say, a white? From what I heard, probably. Uh, easy. Go in there, fuck shit up, leave, get paid. Ah, I like that mentality. Though. No promises, though. <laughs> <laughs> of course, like I said, if it becomes too much to handle, I understand if you have to leave as well. Which is what brings me to this. And he reaches back under his robes to a little bag on his back, and he hands, he hands Glass a little shimmering stone. If you use this and just say the words, get me the hell out of here, it will teleport you back to me. You have to be oh, within gosh. ten. You have to be within ten feet of the person using it to actually do anything. If you are not within ten feet, you will not be brought back. And it's only a one-time use as well. So if you have to use it early and have to come out, you're going. You're going back in there without one. I've got. I'm sorry to say. Fair enough. All right. Thank you for this. Hopefully, we don't need to use it at all. All right. Let's go. I don't one think last, I should be the one holding this, though. And one last thing to all there. of you. Before you continue, you see him point to a little space in front of him where he wants all of you to line up. I have a spell that'll let me keep in contact with all of you. Mm, okay. Okay. And once you're all in place, you see him lift his, his staff into the air, and he gently taps each one of you on the head with it connecting all of you to him with a rarey's telepathic bond a special version that'll last the time that you're allowed down there and as he does that he turns back to the vault tapping it with his staff causing it to slowly slide open and reveal the dark tunnel that leads down light 
shunt only a few feet down. <clears throat> I can hold this vault open for eight hours. After eight hours, it will close on its own. And if you don't have the stone, you're trapped down there. So, But if you I have the stone, we're not trapped down there. We can still use it to get out, correct? If you do have the stone, you're not trapped down there. But I don't think it would be a wise idea to stay down there, even if you still have the stone. I can't I imagine what sort of creatures come out in the event that my warding magic start, starts to fail. One more thing. The first party that encountered the thing in the center, uh, they used the bubble to get out, correct? Yes, they had to use that little, that little stone to get out. Okay. Please, all of you. And he ushers you down into the catacombs, though he does not himself follow. Well then, Riul, shall we? After you. <laughs> Let's go. Riul will shrug. Uh, like, Let's go. Oh, you'll go in. Give me a moment here. There are some things in the catacombs that should have gone away but haven't for some reason. Okay, so while you're doing that, uh, I will cast, because uh, it's an eight-hour spell, so I'm going to cast Aid on nice. Glass, Morks, and Tim. So everybody's max HP and current HP goes up by five. Okay, that was not on me, right? It was Glass, Morks, and Tim, and I'll uh, uh, post the spell so you can have it there. So, so the people that I've listed, your max HP got, has gone up by five. Thanks for that. And uh, when you, your owl there, do you want him to hold this? Who knows what we might see down there? Uh, sure, I guess. I just hope it doesn't get him shot. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. You don't want to. So. Oh, uh, another quick thing. So, uh, tw Tim is switching out from his uh, hammer and shield to his glaive. All right. So it's, <clears> his AC's got to go down. You all descend down into the catacombs, starting at the green hex there at the top, where the little token is representing where your party is. There is several directions that you can go, but <clears throat> the Chamberlain informs you that at the center of the building, where the goldish-brown hex is down near the bottom, is where the strange entity is located. Oh you my get to decide which way you want to take. You don't have to go there, but you can make a plot there if you would like. Uh, I see a check and an X in every single box. Is that accurate? Hmm. Same. I see a check and a hex. I see a check and an X. In every single one. Mm -hmm. Then you must give me one second because you should not see anything. I didn't see anything. Same. So... Yeah, was it looks that... like bright neon red X. Oh, the map's gone now. Was that Morx and Linari? Who could see the X's? And the checks? I think it was, you know, it was Glass and Linari. Glass. Yeah. Yes, no one should be able to see those. There we go. Okay. Nice. How's that? Yep. So do we know where the previous party went already, or...? I was still into so, it out anyway, so... The previous parties have gone this way. And the other party went this way before they ended. They didn't make it all the way to the middle. And how long does it take to travel each one? <clears throat> it takes roughly 30 minutes to travel one hex if there's nothing there. If you all manage to do quite well, in certain hexes, it can be as low as 15 minutes. Though some obstacles may bounce it to as long as a, sing a full hour. Alright, alright. So if we go 31... Wait. 30? Wait, well, 30? One hour. Hour and a half. Two hours. And we're gonna keep circling around and then eventually make our way. <laughs> Yeah, okay think? with that plan? Yeah, I mean, if we make it to the center and yeah, we we should be able to have some short rests, hopefully. Uh, did anyone? Did anyone? Uh, 
Did anyone write down what we needed to get for you see, the oh, I right. actually have something for you all that you can see. Lenari laughs and problem. goes, what is writing? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot oh, about that. Poor thing. That's strong in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to pat That's Lenari nice. on the back. You poor thing. So, I'll keep you right should sometime. all have a little note, and one of you should be able to edit it whenever you find something. I will be keeping track of this on off the thing, just in case. I don't think you can cheat me now. <laughs> the audience is going to do the yeah. tracking. Oh, uh, we can only spend eight hours in here? Yes, yes that is what the Chamberlain yeah. said. Well, he recommended we leave before the eight hours, because the doors will close, and something horrible will try to kill us. Fuck it, oh, do, yeah. do you just want to make a beeline oh. straight down the center? That's what I was saying, but uh, yeah, we, how long, long do you go back is the question. Now, hold, hold on, so hold if on. You had... If we head down the center what is... and we encounter whatever is there and we uh, have to bail, we might actually fail the mission. We should at least focus on collecting everything we need and then heading down the center. Well, that's why I said we go down like this well, and then just circle around the middle until we have what we need. And... Yeah, Does that but... make sense if we go like this? Um, well... Real, personally, and uh, me, uh, I would much rather see this place purified of undead than whether or not uh, it can be used as a gold mine. You know, I mean, we can do both if we do this strategy. And you are yeah. assuming that if we reach here, the thing in the middle is not actually going to come towards us. I mean, he this one was gold, highlighted gold. He said that this is the one that has it. It's not gold anymore, but... I do agree, let's head down direct south. See yeah, what let's at least head down one hex, and if we want to change minds, we can change uh, we ha We have one more question, though. How do we get back? Like, how much time does it take to get back? So, the amount of time that it takes to get back is <clears throat> 15 minutes in a hex that you have successfully crossed. Okay, so that changes things up a little bit. We'll have to keep track, but the very first one shouldn't be too big of a deal, time-wise. And there are some things that may complicate being able to return through a hex as well. Oh, fantastic. Let me put that back there. There you go. So, let's take a vote. To the left, right, or straight down? Put straight down. One. Is that what everyone's going for, it looks I think, like? Yeah, I think everybody said down. But let's yep, see what down. Else. Get down. Down in the hole we go. All right, then. Let us commence. So as you head down this first... <clears throat> to this first part of the tunnel system, the catacombs. The place where you entered from was a bit wider and open, looking quite nice and easy to traverse, though as you begin making your way straight down, it becomes a little bit more windy and wild as you notice the tunnels begin to look uh, very similar and uncomfortably familiar you see what you think to be the place you just passed, or maybe it was over there. Perhaps it was back there? Are we actually going forward? It's a little hard to tell. It's getting quite samey. We should probably start marking stuff on the walls. <laughs> yeah, good call. Uh, Tim has some chalk on him. He can start no. drawing on the floor as we go. As you begin doing that, since you are using your chalk... I want all of you to make me either an investigation or a wisdom a wisdom perception check with advantage because you have your friend there making your little uh, trail. Perception, you said. Oh, that was bad rolls. With advantage. You did have advantage, like I said. So let's yeah. see, that's a 22, a 21, a 21, a 19, a 20. Tim is distracted so, by uh, marking the chalk. <laughs> the, I can already tell the overall group average will be higher than what is necessary. Due to the chalk being used, though, you wind up using all of your chalk as you get through here. You do not get stuck and lost in this area for more time than you need. You all successfully manage to navigate a little bit faster than you would actually expected. This, let's see, make this the right color. 
you all come out of this. Nice. And that is not supposed to be there, but do not worry about it. You get the little check. It takes you 15 minutes to cross that particular hex going down. Jesus. You the power of cock. All right. I guess we need to remember that. Ooh. Time is being updated. All right. Out of character, I seriously recommend everyone buy some chalk. It's a lifesaver. Oh, definitely. I'll put Thanks it on the me. list. <laughs> So. I mean, I've got a thousand of these. I can just drop one as we go. <laughs> you continue forward into the next area, and as you begin making your way there, you get a little message from <clears throat> the Chamberlain as he sort of chimes in to speak to all of you. Hmm. I, I th- I'm picking up something here. I think there might be some resources to look out for while you're in this region. Keep a close eye open. And as true to his word, you begin noticing there are several old pieces of mining equipment everywhere. A long trail that leads through the caverns, some mine carts that have been derailed over time. And an uncomfortable amount of skeletons laying around, some of them with pickaxes between their ribs. Others look twisted and broken and even find one crushed by a rock. A little unfortunate. But <clears throat> this is an area with some resources. Perhaps you can all find them with a wisdom or investigation check. Group. And I will take the average again. Tim will cast guidance on himself and he will do another perception check. Yeah, I'll perception, you on say. <laughs> Oh, dear. Well, it's a good thing that one shouldn't drag everyone down too much. Uh, hold on. Real still got to make a perception check. Perception check. There we go. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's everyone. All right. Got it. So, Lenari, you got the best natural check there. I would like you to roll me 2d6. Oh do, oh, do I get to decide our party is failing? Mm, you... <laughs> so, <clears throat> scrounging through this area, as you're informed that there might be resources here, you begin digging and looking around, though it's your eye, Lenari, that catches the resources first, and you manage to find what looks like a rather hefty deposit of iron that could easily be picked apart a little bit, providing you all with four iron deposits to start off with. Nice. All right. There. You collect. (laughs) There. Right there. Just do it. (laughs) I mean, she she points to her weak arms that are noodle arms. (laughs) You know, that's fair. Kriraka knows what it's like to have noodle arms. So it takes a little bit of time to mine these resources out as you're not quite at the hour mark. It is 45 minutes that you've spent down here and you have collected four iron and you're continuing straight down, aren't you? Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, how long? Oh, it took three minutes. Gotcha. You just, I'll mark it on your map. And you continue downwards to the next area. The catacomb here begins to look a little bit more lived in, recent. As you begin to see what looks like newer mining equipment here and there, more tracks leading all around this place. And more surprisingly, you begin to see what almost looks like newer tracks that have been laid down not too long ago. They probably couldn't be older than maybe 20, 30 years. And even the mining carts you come across look a little bit shinier than the ones before. It's a little bit strange, to say the least. Though there's still plenty of debris that you can see around. Just give me one moment here. All right. uh, 
So I think Glass has a good idea. If we attack the big bad first and it's too much for us, we can still use the crystal or the stone to get out and come back in. And if we go in right now for it, we're going to be fresh. What do you guys think? Let's do it. Yes. Let's go. Well, you're all <clears throat> having this nice little conversation about what you're going to do. <laughs> see. I mean, we can oh, man. This is darkest dungeon music, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, I knew so, I recognized yeah. it from somewhere. Well, you're all having this nice little. Oops. Well, you're all having this nice little conversation. <clears throat> you eventually kind of stumble into this more open area of the cave where it looks like this is somewhere where miners once used to rest and um, <clears throat> relax while they were working down here as much as one can, of course. It's. A uh, bit dark, that's to say the least. It doesn't look like life has come through here in a while. There are large metal pillars that hold everything up into the air. As the roof in this area, it reaches almost a good 30 feet high. Uh, I'm just seeing a blank screen. Should I drag my icon in there? Uh, I see Lenari, um, but I just see a black screen as well. Oh, okay. The top left corner. I see my guy now. Unless we're like in a box. I'm going to put a it's torch on dark him because dark. of his yeah, thing. It's dark, yeah. There we go. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Tim has ah. that flame, so that's why I dragged it on. Yes, you have no dark vision. I don't know why you don't have the little ring around you like you should, even in the dark. But that I don't know. definitely helps. Either way, <clears throat> you have the nice little torch to light the way. As glass steps forward first. What can glass no, see? So, <clears throat> you can just make out what looks like... You can kind of make out what looks like old sleeping bags covered in dirt and dust. And there are mine carts that sit off the rails underneath this strange contraption that looks like a metal arm reaching down. It connects into the wall. Hmm, what do you guys think? This looks oddly suspicious. Uh, we're all going to look at the ceiling. <laughs> <clears throat> the roof is really high, and you have a hard time seeing all the way to the top, but it doesn't seem like there's anything up there. Okay. That is, that is uh, room check number one. <laughs> Tim is going to go into his backpack, pull out an actual torch, light it, and throw it into the middle of the room. All right. Give me one second here. So. <clears throat> Minus one torch for Tim. So, <clears throat> with that light there, Glass, you can see a little bit further. There is what appears to be like a little, little communal area there in the middle with an old busted up furnace and what looks like a large blast furnace of some sort in the middle of the room. Or maybe it's a blacksmith's... Um, a blacksmith smithy. It's a bit strange to see, yes, though. The more concerning thing are the bones that you notice on the one of the beds and a pile of skulls kind of piled up together not far from them. And yeah, a much larger pile of bones. A much larger pile of bones near the center of the room. Hey, uh, Mr. Paladin, do you, don't you have one of those, uh, I don't know, abilities to pray to your god or whatever and <laughs> See if there's any undead around. I'm afraid of your god. <laughs> hey, Glass, can I have ten ball hey, I bearings? I don't know how it works. Ball bearings? Yeah, yeah. you can have, uh... I've got... Two, you can have one bag. Thank you. Riordan will take one ball bearing, cast light on it, and toss it over here. Oh. All right. So, <clears throat> as you toss it over there, you don't see anything begin moving. The <clears throat> bones just kind of settle a little bit as they fall to the side. Oh, like a single ball. I got what you're saying. Like you're casting light on it. Yeah. So basically a torch. Like here. Oh, you're, you're done. Okay. 
So yes, <clears throat> just a few more bones and what looks like old um old barrels of food. You can kind of smell it now. It doesn't smell too good anymore. It's probably surprising that there would be anything left. <clears throat> Marks again, do you yeah. sense anything around here? Yeah, I will open my awareness to see if I can so, sense anything. Um <clears throat> how far does that go? Um, hold on, I'll finish just a sec. I believe it's 60 feet. It's 60 Can you feet. ping the ability? Okay. Six, yes, it's 60 feet. Can you ping it, though? Hold on, let's see yeah. if I can find that. Let's click on it. Let me do this. Aha, perfect. I think this is it right here. So, Morks, you don't pick up anything from where you're at right now. There's nothing really going off in any of your your little detection sensors. Nothing in your mind seems to indicate there would be undead where you're at. Oh, that's great. Seems clear for now. All right. Um, I don't can't can't detect anything. All right. Let's... Progress then. <clears throat> Let's see. So, you stop there for a moment. Let me take a look at everyone's passive perception. So, Riordan, Lenari, and Tim, you can kind of hear what sounds like muttering and talking coming from over in this direction, somewhere up high. You notice a ledge that reaches almost 50 feet up, <clears throat> but you can't quite see anything up there just yet. Uh-huh. But you hear muttering. It, it's a little hard to make out. It, it sounds almost like someone saying, March, left, right, march, left, right. Okay, Tim will move over here, pick up the torch he threw, and he's going to toss <clears throat> it over here. So, as you toss it over there, you can kind of get a little better look up there on top of the ledge, and you see some strange-looking entities that kind of stare in shock as they see that light erupting from the unseen darkness down below. Let me just remove this. And... They all look in your direction, um, concerned, to say the least. What do they look like? (laughs) They are down to the south. You see a flickering green flame of of something floating in the air, and it's very hard to make out, but you can kind of notice that he is flanked on each side by heavily armored-looking um, individuals. It's hard to tell if they're alive or not, though. Though the green, glowing, strange creature definitely looks alive. <clears throat> and you can hear it call out, Who, who goes there? <laughs> what do you guys want to do? There's no one going Oh, we do. <laughs> Yeah, only us. What are you doing down here? Have you come looking for us finally? Yes, sure. Yeah, uh-huh. actually. So, Morks, as you reach right there, you get a ping immediately that this creature right here is undead. Um, guys, he is <clears throat> definitely undead. Ah, has the has the. <clears throat> Has the Guild of Wizards finally sent someone to find us? We've been down here for so long. We're a guild of sorts. What kind of guild? You want to be found? We've got, we've got wizards. <clears throat> um, are you saying you're not from the Guild of Wizards? No, of course not. We are from the Guild of Wizards. Are you from the <clears throat> Guild of Wizards? Where is your ID? I am from the <laughs> Guild of Wizards. My name is Merico. And I have been down here trying to find a way out of these darn catacombs for the past... I have lost count. 
Uh, do you have any Just ideas? Just stick with us. We'll get out. Yeah, why can't you get out? out? Yeah, just stick with us. We'll stick with us. We'll get you out. Nice friends I, I don't you have know there. why we can't get out. I, for some reason, <clears throat> every time we start making our way towards what we think is the exit, we get turned around and wind up back here. Have you tried using chalk? You kind of see him <laughs> look around at his own body <laughs> that he lacks, and you see him look to his skeletal guards as well. Does it look like any of us have chalk? Mm, I guess not. Would you like some? Do you yeah, have chalk yeah. on you? Uh, I can does. give you some. Uh, so. I, I can give yes. you some. So I think I'm having some connection issues. So you guys are breaking up. <clears throat> I can hear you, but you are kind of breaking up a little bit. Okay, it seems to have fixed itself. So this guy is flying about 50 feet, 55 feet up in the air as he comes out over here and approaches a little bit. And of course, <clears throat> Morks, you're getting pings that, of course, he is undead, and these three right here are also undead, all of these three. So you can only assume the last one's probably undead as well. Do you have the chalk to offer me? Please, uh, I want to see it. Yeah, Tim goes into his back and pulls out his last piece of chalk. He's going to look at you and kind of... You, you imagine he'd squint if he had eyelids. <clears throat> and he begins to mutter something again. It, it's hard to make out. Sorry, say that again? What'd you say? It, it doesn't seem to be in any sort of language that you know. It it's, sounds like gibberish, actually. <clears throat> Would it you sound like he... spellcasting? It does not sound like spellcasting, no, but you see the red embers that are his eyes begin to flicker and glow a little as his jaw goes slack for a moment. <clears throat> and you hear something else speak through him. More have come. More have come to give themselves to the inevitable. Please accept your wonderful donation. Our lives will make a wonderful addition. Ah, you fudge. notice that the skull doesn't seem to be in control of itself anymore, and it mm -hmm. slowly begins to sink in the air before it rises back up, eyes glimmering with a. Actually, friend, I have a map. Color. It will definitely help huh? you get out. If you will only <clears throat> let me approach so I can give it to you. I don't think he wants to get out anymore. <laughs> As you say that, you hear a response. There is nothing that I will take from you. Riordan would like to shoot, shoot his crossbow. What? <laughs> Riordan's gonna shoot his crossbow at the, this one. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna catch from his I think it's Glad the time someone to... someone did it. <laughs> Damn it, I wanted to get close. Okay, roll for in the air. You must remember that. Yeah, sorry again, my internet cut out. Still was. Don't worry. <clears throat> so, yes, it is time to roll for initiative as something is spoken through the skull and it seems to have gotten aggressive. So, we have Skelly Boy up there, we have skeletons down there. Got it. They are up. Uh, you know what? I think I clicked on the torch that was behind Tim. I put it again. I'll use the first one. There you go. All right. I'll, get, I'll use the first one. <laughs> Uh, 6.5. There we go. So, does everyone roll? Looks like it. Something more appropriate for the moment, just before we get this rolling. <clears throat> so, who goes first? It looks like <clears throat> one of the skeletal bodyguards gets to go first. As you see him pull out this old-looking longbow, <clears throat> and he is going to aim at Morks, who is the closest, pulling it back and letting loose. I assume a 10 doesn't hit you. Oh, oh sir. <clears throat> the bolt, the arrow goes flying and bounces off your armor as Ryu's turn is up next. 
All right. Um, uh, what is real going to do? Oh, uh, no. Uh, fuck. So we got a floating skull and a bunch of skeletons on, like, a cliff. All yes. Right. All right. I guess who will, for now, go here. And actually, he'll go here. And he will take out his longbow and shoot at the skeleton over here. Okay. <clears throat> so as you fire your bolt at him, you see its mouth open up and hellish words erupt from it as its glimmering shield seems to appear around it and your bolt just bounces off. It has oh, cast what? shield on itself. Oh, <laughs> well, that does mean a 13 would have hit normally, so that's good to know. Yep. All right, um, that's all Riel's going to do for his turn. Wait, why on earth did your longbow get a dueling bonus on it? Uh, because I'm too lazy to turn off the dueling bonus. Class, <laughs> it is your turn. Yeah, I do the same thing with rage sometimes. Uh, all right, I don't like ranged fighting, but I do have a longbow. So I'll pull it out, and I'll take a couple shots at this flying dude. All right. He is still glowing with that magical shield, but you hit him with the first shot. Nice. Um, let's see. That is not magical, is it? No, it's not. It's just a plain old one. So <clears throat> the bowl, the arrow hits him, and it kind of cheeks off a little bit of bone, but it doesn't look like it hurts it that badly. Oh, fantastic. Well, another one off only. Your second one, unfortunately, is reflected by the shield that surrounds him. All right. Uh, I can move 30 feet here and try to get some cover from those skeleton dudes. I can't see them All from right. here. So hopefully that means it's I can't see me. Lenari's turn. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> she is going to step forward a bit. Ten. She's gonna step forward. Another ten. Fuck! Why do these things have to be so far away? That's twenty twenty-five. Hey, there we go. And she's gonna burn the shit out of them. <clears throat> um. What are you gonna use? Let me see. Summon wildfire spirit. Please ping the ability real quick. Yep, sorry, just marking off the uh, wild, uh, the wild chip charge. <clears throat> within 30 feet of you, each creature within 10 feet of the spirit other than you. Yes. So the creature, they are about 50 feet up, and the skull is 55 feet up. Oh, I Isn't see. Could be able to hit them? I see. Would if, what if I summon the spirit on this ledge? Would he be? Would you be able to summon him up there with only thirty feet? Is the question. I could go up here for thirty feet. <clears throat> uh, if if we Pythagorean theory this out, C I is mean, the longest. C is the quickest angle. I, I'm just mostly bringing this up because it can hover, correct? Mm -hmm. So you can summon about thirty feet up in the air, and it should work. True, but I could also summon on the land right there. It's fifty feet up. Does that? Yeah. Oh, true, it's 50 feet up, yeah, so if I summon it 30 feet up, it would technically hit 10 feet up. Yeah, so it would... So it could hit right there, and then just be 30 feet hovering in the air, so I would move back there. Okay, so... Let me make a save for these skeletons. They have to make a DC 13 save? Yes, or they take this much damage. That's a fire teleport. That's the damage they take. Oh, wow. So let's see. Save. So one rolls a 17, one rolls a 3, one rolls a 14, one rolls a 5. So as your fiery spirit erupts into existence, you see two of them immediately get destroyed, while the other two 
block themselves behind their shields from the fire. Let's see. So this one has been obliterated and is out of the game. And this one has also been destroyed. The skull does not seem at all affected by the flames. Yep, the spirit is then going to... Uh, Lenore is going to use her bonus action to command the spirit. And the spirit is commanded to make a fiery seed attack against this one. All right. <clears throat> Roll. And that unfortunately does not hit as the heavily armored skeleton lifts its shield and the fiery little seed gets stuck in it. Okay, Lenari still has five feet of movement, so she's going to just fucked off. And as your turn ends, you hear this skull begin to talk again. Let us all come to embrace the true eternity. And let me do what everyone loves and everyone hates. Get out the measuring tool. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fireball. Fireball time. Fireball time. Fireball time. That is the wrong shape. <laughs> So, 20 feet. It is going to fire it right... Would that... Would, would it catch me in? Am you I would it? just be outside of it, not covered enough, but I need Mark's Glass, Riordan, and Tim to all make me a saving throw. Of? Dex, or... Dex. A dexterity saving throw. Oh, damn, I never get a dex save that high. Uh, Wait, can, I add, can I add guidance to it? No, you can't add guidance to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, guidance is an action, man. So, let's see. Um, guidance come on. Help save it. Are you broken? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll do it the old-fashioned way, then. Give me a second here. So... Whoops. Sorry about this. He decided he wanted to break, and we'll roll now. So, okay, um, let's see who made that save. Morks, you take 22 fire damage on your save. Tim, you, <laughs> you take 22 fire damage on your save. Riordan, you take 22 fire damage. And Glass, you take 44... Wait, you take 40... Four fire damage. That's nothing. He's a barbarian, it's fine. And the little skull gives a little chuckle, its jaw moving, but nothing comes out as he flies this way, remaining up high. Let's see, so he flies this way, and then this way, and then this way, making it nice and convoluted. And that will be his turn as I have to reopen the initiative tracker because of that little annoying bug. Marks, it's your turn, and you're feeling quite crispy right now. I'm a little bit hot and bothered, so I'm going to come here. And I'm just going to hit him with my... I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark, and then I'm going to hit him with my axe. He is 50 feet up in uh, on a ledge. Oh, he is? Yes. I am not sure that your arms are that long, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't realize that. Um... Let me do this. Maybe this will help. What is it that you are going to do then? Okay. I throw my javelin up that higher now. Oh, can you ping? Oh, wait, ping the javelin's distance? I'm not sure. Is it 30, 60, or what? I think it... Hold on, I'll check. Javelin. Javelin 5e. So the range that you can fling a javelin is 120 feet. Wow, I didn't think you could throw it that far. Unfortunately, it will have disadvantage. I see no other options, really, so... We cast Hunter's Mark and then my javelin at him. So let me just make sure to mark him with that. He is marked, and you are concentrating on that spell. All right. 
Does he hit? That let me do it for some reason. Hmm. Refresh your roll 20 real quick. I'm going to refresh mine as well. I don't want to roll off your sheet, but I can try that if it if maybe it helps. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. Ah, you know. So you can just roll off my sheet, like. Ah, eh, you know, I, just a, a few roll twenty issues as usual. I don't know what's going on. It's it's just blank right now. Marks. Let's see character sheet. Okay. Okay. Now I got it to work. Oh, there we go. So, yes, unfortunately, with that disadvantage, you do not hit as your javelin flings and gets stuck in the rock, going clink. Yeah, that's is my that turn. All you, is that all? Oh, right. That is all you can do, unfortunately. I see these two skeletons. Okay. I noticed some skeletons did not make it into the tracker for some reason. Great. Wonderful. I'll have to do this. Um, sorry, just a quick thing. You said there was a fireball that hit us? Yes. I believe you misrolled. It's supposed to be 86, not 88. Yes. Oh, well, you are right. Let me uh, re-roll that, see what you get this time. 50. <laughs> Damn, that's a good Wait, catch. I set it to a d6. Why did it roll a d8? So, um, you want to believe this? It still rolled 40 damage. 25? I'm seeing 25 there. <laughs> Wait. Oh, there's two rolls. We'll take the one, the 25. Okay, so everyone who took that, you actually wound up taking 12 damage instead if you made the save, and 25 on a fail. Gotcha. My roll oh, 20 is being really, really bad right now, and I don't know that's why. Mine too. It is double rolling, and so that was Mork's turn. Reordin, it is your turn now, and hopefully what? roll 20 will stop having its hissy fit. Where did that skull go to? Because I can't see it anymore. Um, oh, well, that's because he has moved out of your vision from the looks of it. Yeah, but I, I saw which way it went. It went over here somewhere, correct? Yes, he did. Stupid cat that mages. Riordan is gonna move 20 feet over here. And he can see it. Yay. Stupid that wizard. Is anyone else gonna attack this one with something damaging? You sure we don't need bless? I mean, all I got is move. Oh. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Um... Uh, go ahead and do what you're gonna do. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get him too. That was poor donk. The Orden is gonna grab his uh, amulet, invoke the blessing of Coral Narration and uh, guiding bolt to the skeleton. Okay. Nice. Ooh, wow, that hits. Unfortunately, um, that is unbelievably pitiful. <laughs> But you do still deal a good five radiant damage to him, and he looks Woo! very unhappy. And then, kind since I'm a wood elf, I will run back strikes. over here. And That's my turn. The next attack against him has advantage. Let me mark him with a little thingy. It is now this skeletal bodyguard's turn. He is going to take a step this way, going over here and just narrowly making it on top of that ledge. And he looks like he's going to shoot at Riordan for harming his boss. Rolling a 15, does that hit? Uh, 15 does not hit. Although, how far the... is the longbow range? Um, I can assure you, you are in range. Uh, okay. He's 50 feet up. You are, you're, you're still within essentially 50 feet of him, even if he's 50 feet up. That's not how math works, but okay. <laughs> it still misses. No. At the moment, my armor is 16. I mean, 
see so that arrow sticks to the ground just in front of you not quite making it all the way to you that'll be his turn is the owl what is he going to do little owl holy shit um <clears throat> um holy crap all right uh the owl is going to fly over here somewhere and see if the owl can like perception check to try to find the um try to find the the guy the the skull that just flew off i mean the <laughs> your Guiding little owl bolt. has plenty of dark your Al has plenty of dark vision, and the skull is actually glowing right now. He is right over here. Ah, uh, I will ping okay. him. All right. Is the owl going to do anything else? He's going to just sit there. I guess since he's here, he will go over to this guy and perform the help action to give the next attack on it um, advantage. So he threw. He flew thirty feet. How high? How much more flight does he have left? He has thirty more feet, and then he just used the rest. He would not be able to make it all the way up there. That is a fifty feet ledge. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I guess the owl will just take the dodge action then. This guy's dead, and this guy's dead. All right. So Tim, it's your turn. Touching the light bulb hand. There you go. And let's see. 30 feet should get me over here. Bring the light with him. Uh, I see him. Okay, so he's 55 feet up in the air. Yep. All right. He's going to cast his own guiding bolt at it. And with advantage because no one's hit him yet. Yeah. Yep. Pew. Oh, juicy. That's much, that's much more juicy as you hit him. For that 19, and he takes that hefty chunk of radiant damage, his eyes flaring for a few seconds. Is that all? Uh, that is my turn. Uh, anybody else who gets a swing at him, he he's giving advantage now. The mage light does not count as a character. <laughs> so, it is now this skeleton's turn, and he is going to take his bow. He's going to attack you, Tim, with it, firing it for an 18 for 9 piercing damage. 9 piercing damage. right out. And you score a successful hit on the flame skull, but his bodyguard hits you in the shoulder with a very painful arrow. Real. It's your turn now. Real, are you alive, or are you muted? I'm muted. Sorry. Uh, Real will uh, mm, he will cast Shadow Blade. And okay. Yeah. Um, can you ping that real quick? So twenty sixty range. That? You would be. He would just be within range if you move a little closer, and he would be in the far range. Yeah. Though, uh, am I in? Where's the where's the bright light in this condition? The shadow blade has advantage in dim light. So let's see. Your friends have kind of blanketed everything in torches. Uh. Well, it's it's bright light twenty feet and another twenty feet of that is dim light. Yeah. So this right now you're in bright light, but if you step right here. You would be in dim light. Okay. Well, I guess I'll, uh, I'll stop here. So All right. In dim, light. In dim light. And then um, how far away is he now? He, he already has advantage on him due to the um, what the guiding bolt. So True. being in All dim right. light or being in any light really wouldn't make a difference as you would be rolling normal unless you got... No, you couldn't get close enough to throw that without disadvantage, because he is 55 yeah. feet up in the air. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to use my full movement, go there, and then 
I might as well since he's got the guiding bolt on him. So here we go, Shadow Blade. Oh, impressive! Oh, wow. So that is eight plus four. <clears throat> he is looking very beaten and battered, more than bloodied. Looking close to just collapsing out of the air. All right. And that- real will be like, get rid of the get rid of the skull, guys. All right. And it'll be my turn. You don't say, Lenari. <laughs> um, Lenari turn. slowly realizes that the skull's immune to fire damage, and slowly realizes that she only has fire damage. Oh, oh no! <clears throat> so, how hurt is the paladin right now? The paladin is a little. He's a little more than bloodied. I'd say he's about beatered, about beaten and battered. Okay. Um. Do, do, do. Glass is fine. I don't care about glass. Bard is squishy. <laughs> Cleric is also squishy. Uh, Cleric can heal himself. Paladin can fucking heal himself. Bard can I, heal himself. I believe Riordan is. No, about, I'm half. Yeah, he's bloody. I'm bloody. Definitely bloody. He's exactly. He's exactly half elf. Uh, uh, the cleric is doing worse. Um, do what you can do. I cannot see more HP. Um, mm, like one third down. She doesn't really care who she heals, so she's just going to... Okay. She's going to go up, slap a hand on Ryan's wounds, and burn them. Cauterizing them, casting cure wounds. Ah! For nine healing, wow, that's very nice. You More feel much do. better, even as, un- as as uncomfortable as it is that your wounds have been cauterized, considering they are burn wounds. And then she's gonna turn to her fire spirit and be like, "Flame seed the assholes." That being the asshole, it's the end of her turn now. Fire spirit ghost. Fire spirit's gonna flame seed this asshole, and it spits. And it spits. Give me a second to go on the attack. Blech. That just misses, unfortunately, as it sticks into his shield once again. And you see him kind of lifting his shield as it is now kind of burning and a little on fire. Excuse me? Okay. Yeah, that's the end of Lunari's turn. Glass, it is your turn. Uh, Alright, I'll come out of hiding a little bit. Uh... Where is it? There he is. <laughs> I'll uh, shoot him two times. All right. Oh, yeah. That first shot does not hit, but the second one does. But unfortunately, it is <laughs> not time. enough to finish the flame skull as he is just barely holding on. God damn it. Well, I go back and hide like a good barbarian should. <laughs> You're yeah, supposed to be the frontliner. What are you this doing? This is not my forte. <laughs> so, the flame skull, as you have hit him, is going to fly this way. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, right here. And you see his mouth open as several little bolts of energy shoot out at you. And again, he doesn't want to work properly, so we'll have to do this the old-fashioned way. He rolls magic missile, <laughs> and he upcast it to second level. So that is four bolts of three. Uh, no, that it's actually four damage each. All right. So you take a total. Yep, you take a total of sixteen force damage. Barely below he, half. <laughs> He is floating there, cracked and broken, but still swinging. Mordak, or Morx, it's your turn. All right. Um, I don't see too many options here, so I'm going to just javelin this guy again. Um, I javelin this dude. Okie dokie. And away the javelin goes. Oh my god. It's being slow again. Yeah. Let's 
see. Character sheet. Did I just roll it on the D20? Or? Just just roll a D20 and another D20. If it's going to be like this, that's fine. Okay. We love roll 20, don't we? <laughs> you have a plus five to hit. Yeah, plus five. So the first one would not hit. So there's and... really no point in rolling again. I'm yeah. There really is no point in rolling again, as you try to throw your javelin, but you get a little too short and hit the ground, or rather, the rocky surface of that wall. Okay, so I will move here, and is that all on your turn? Yeah, that's all my turn. Riordan, it is now your turn. This thing keeps hiding away from me. Jordan is going to move over here. See this thing. And should I be the cross? Shots away, you have advantage. Wait, you would not have advantage on that one. Nope. Because yes. that would not hit, unfortunately, as your light crossbow bolt goes a little too low. And then I will move back here and then my turn. And then he'll move bravely away. As bravely this skeleton away. is now going to attempt to take a shot at, let's see, Glass was the last person to fire. Let's see here. You uh, gonna fire your bow? All right, then. Right. Do it like this. And he fires his bow. So he rolls a 10. I assume that does not hit you as that arrow goes and sticks into the ground. And that'll be all he does. His owl is now owling about. Well, real, what's your owl going to do? If you have accident, I'm muted. You. I'm sorry. I tend to mute myself because I'm, I, I have a chip. But <clears throat> I... My owl is a little bit disheartened that it's a little that this fight is basically over. So it's gonna, it's just gonna dodge where it is. All right, let's hope those aren't cursed words as Tim's turn rolls around. Uh, Tim is going to do what's been working and, and cast another guiding bolt. And away, you fire, and that does not hit, even without him having to do anything. Your guiding bolt just zooming past him as the skull flies out of the way. All right, uh, you ex you said the bonus action is for super potions? Yes. I will take a bonus action to chug. Chug, chug, Clicked on it, chug. nothing happened. I guess because I roll 20 is being friendly tonight. Uh. All right, uh, let me see. What is a potion of healing usually like? It is 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2, okay. And are you going to move or are you going to stand there as well? So you regain 7 hit points. I'm going to move because I don't trust this guy not to do another like AoE. So I'm going to just... Yeah. Okay, I'm touching the fireball here. And now watch, as yeah, I move yeah. away. Yes, there we go. All right, so All I right. hit for seven, and I move away. That's my turn. And the skeleton has still the last person to actually hit the flame skull and deal anything significant to it that it can see is glass. And it rolls a nine on its attack. The arrow gets stuck right in that large furnace in front of you. I don't even see this guy. <laughs> I'll he is take it. Way, he is way up above you, above the furnace. Nice. Real, it is your turn. <clears throat> All right. Um, Real uses bonus action to bring, bring back his shadow blade. He'll go uh, over here and throw it at the skull. Okay. And seeing that the blade is about to hit him, you see him cast another shield on himself. No, uh, 
splits. Wait, is that in dim light or bright light there? He is 55 feet up. Remember uh, that. That should uh, be dim light then. Fucker. It would be a normal attack roll in that case. Well, it's still 16. And he casts shield on himself as the as the uh, blade is about to hit him, prolonging its dumb little life a little longer. What a fucker. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> at all, really. That's all I can do. Unfortunate. Lenari. Um, she's going to keep trying to kill these skeletons. Um, let's see. Is anyone hurt and needs healing? Oh, Glass needs healing. Uh, does she care enough, though? Yeah, I, don't I mean, really he's got it. more health than you. Nah, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> um, Lenari is going to run over. Boop. She is going to create bonfire, this guy. Okay. Let's see how toasty his toes get. Yes, let Let's us see save. how to- Oop, that is Thunder Wave, not Thunder Wave. Create bonfire. He rolls an 18 on the save. Okay, <laughs> bonus action. Flame Spirit. The, this one has advantage on it, right? Um, No, that one actually has Hunter's Mark on him. Hunter's Mark, got it. Never mind. Flame Spirit is committed to run up and fire teleport. Okay. So that's another deck save, right? Yes, it runs up and then teleports. And he rolls an 11 this time. Let's see how much damage he did. Ha ha! Man, a little cloud of fire erupts, damaging the skeleton pretty badly as now, he looks quite close to half broken. <laughs> no, I have a question. Does this thing want to teleport with my spirit? It does not want to teleport with your spirit, no. Are you- are, are you sure about that? Yes, I am pretty sure he does not want to follow the spirit that just tried to set him on fire. Cool. The spirit is going to teleport 15 feet away, hovering in the sky, level with the skeleton. Okay. And we roll to Glass's turn now. What shall Glass um, do? As the annoying sh- little butt sits there in the air with with barely hanging on power. And how do you like to kill him? Finally. I just... Place a nicely aimed arrow right into his eyeball. His flaming eye. And his flaming uh-huh. eye. <laughs> Just pin it all the way back to the end of the wall. <laughs> and it goes flying and then back up over here. On um, this guy down here. It's the only one I can see. Oh, oh! I didn't see the uh, attack there. Sorry. So that the twenty-four that does hit him, and he takes the rather chunky four damage, looking about as pained as his little friend over there. That remains it's the end of my turn. Glass, the brave, bold barbarian oh. hiding behind the furnace, <laughs> marks. What else am I going to do? Run around and swing my sword mm. in here? I don't see too many I mean, options I have. <laughs> Yeah. Do you not have any ranged attacks or anything? I have a javelin, but it's a disadvantage. It... Hmm. Sh- shout at the guy. Why well, don't come down here and fight me like a real man? <laughs> That's our pussy skeletons. Get your ass down here. Huh. You know what? Uh, how about you roll intimidation? Let's see how they feel about that. It can it can follow my spirit's teleport ability to get down to him. Intimidation. Hmm. I assume you're intimidating the one with your hunter's mark on it, though, right? Yeah. Oh, he looks like he wants to come at you. It looks like he he wants he wants you. <laughs> Are you gonna okay, move I'll, just, I'll move as close as I can, like towards him. All right. So, like, all right here. So, okay, I think that's my turn. Riordan, then. It is your turn now. Uh, Riordan will join oh. Glass behind the pillar. And fire a crossbow bolt at this one. Don't use Bless, Riordan. We have plenty of things. Incoming and as you are saying that to yourself, you hear your light crossbow go clink as it jams, unfortunately. 
Now it's my turn. That is the most unfortunate thing. Yep. But this skeleton is going to come after Morks as you see him jump down the 50 feet that is there. That is the <laughs> wrong button. He is probably not even going to make it down to the ground. Yes, he comes rolling down and is smashed when he hits the floor, taking more damage than he has health. And now he is part of the pile of bones right there. What a dumb dumb. Ow. I guess you could say he has uh, not a whole lot of brains up in that head. The owl will come over here and land on the previously living skeleton. No, no, no. He, he should have said it looked like he had he a will... bone to pick with him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he will hooch victoriously. All right, then, Tim, what are you going to do? Uh, is there anything still alive? Yes, there is one guy still alive up on the ledge. Oh, here. I see him. Okay. Uh, I wa- want to, like... I burned a few spells, so I'm going to uh, get in close for a sacred flame. Sixty <laughs> feet. Does that mean I have to like get right on the edge, or can I reach him from where I am? I mean, technically, let's see. So that would be right up. He's within range, technically. All yes. right, I'm just going to do sacred flame on him. So that is a deck save, and what does he right. roll? A fifteen. Your spell save is 13. He rolls a 15 on his save. Ooh. And he continues to be an annoyance sitting up there, dodging your sacred flames. Bummer. And are you going to move at all? Or is that where you're going to stay? Uh, I think I'm in a good position. He doesn't have any OEs. Well, considering he doesn't have many things to do, he is going to take his skeletal little brain and he is going to move here. An attempt to shoot you with his longbow, Tim. So you were the last right. one to attack him. And he rolls an 18 for Where's 7 this? piercing damage. 7 damage? Because, because he wants to be annoying before he goes <laughs> out. That's fine. And that That's is what your rests turn. are for. <laughs> Real, yep. it is your turn. Alright. Real's gonna come here and bonus action return his shadow blade to his hand and then Throw it at that guy. Let's do it. Let's see if it hits. Oh, that is unfortunate as your shadow blade gets nice and stuck in the rocky face of the cliff. Is that all on your turn? Uh, That is... Yep, that's my turn. Lenari, save them from the skeleton. Lenari? Are you muted? Uh, there? No, we cannot hear you. No, we cannot hear you. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe they can't hear us either. <laughs> That's actually a probably. Can you hear me? Yes, we <laughs> can hear, hear you now. Hi, hello, sorry. My, my headset is weird, and if it unplugs, I have to unplug it like twice back in. It's complicated. Anyway, create bonfire, the bitch. Oh, max damage. And let's see oh if he fails. Just die already, you dumb, dumb skeleton. And he rolls a three. So Yay. that is just enough to kill him. How would you like to finish him? Uh, the bonfire is like... Uh, her crown forms again, and a beam comes up from it and just laser beams him. And you see this skeletal bodyguard just fall to the ground, burned up to ashes. And that is combat. It's the last one has fallen. And you have saved them from the terror of this single skeletal bodyguard. I was shaking in my boots. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to try to collect my javelins. And Remember, you get half of those. Oh, well, I'm not sure how javelins work. Are they half? Let's see. Uh, Javelin. 
Of course, it doesn't say here. Ammunition. I'd say they count as ammunition. If it is uh, ammunition, then you regain half of them. Can I use mending to fix the other one? You know, it's actually a fairly clever idea. I will allow it. All right. Oh, oh that was very annoying. I didn't get hurt. Uh, <laughs> why are you whining? Stupid boneheads. Can we just agree to flame on the first next undead we see that and try talking to them? There is obviously some sort of enchantment forcing them to be hostile. Can anyway. agree as long as are hurt by flames. <laughs> so while you are all talking, <clears throat> you get a little ping from a familiar individual. <clears throat> Whenever that strange entity starts speaking, I lose sight of all of you. But I do have some good news. I think that area of the mine is quite lively. You might be able to find something there as well. Maybe uh, take a look around. Mm. All right. All right. Mm. Guidance yeah, and perception. Real well. Riordan will do guidance and... Oh, yeah. As, as well. Perception. Let's see. Oh, Anybody right. roll perception? Glass, I'm just so tired of this. And Lenari <laughs> is too. Uh, what's it called? Oh, so just to let you all know that test I was doing, I got a like ninety percent on it. Sorry, ninety five. <laughs> nice, good job. Mm. Congrats. Wonderful. My wallet has fallen out of my pants. <laughs> you all search and search as best as you can, but what you find is but a few nuggets. So, Tim. I would like you to roll 2d6. Oh, and well. Hopefully, you can scrounge something up from this. Hey. You actually do manage to scrounge up two pieces of iron, though. It is a mess down here. It's all dusty and dirty, and it feels a little uncomfortable. Like there's something always watching you over your shoulder. Say, lovey. And How long did that take us? So the combat and finding the resources has taken 30 minutes, which puts you to the one hour and 10, 15 minute mark. All right. And Plenty of time. Will inform you. Hmm? Plenty of time. We got plenty of time. Six hours and 40, 35 minutes. 45 and it's minutes. back to the catacomb. Can we take a short rest? Because I think we could use that. I could use one. All right, then I will put you back here for the time being. Will you take your short rest? Please take your short rest. Before we take the short just... rest, Riordan will uh, use his uh, channel divinity to harness divine power. And get taking a short rest, right? Slot back. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I don't need to roll anything. <laughs> Get a wild check back. I will also use a divine harness divine power to gain one of my level one slots. Do you mind if we take a short break so I could go to the bathroom? That is fine. It has been roughly two hours after all. This is a good point for a short break. Sorry about this. Do, 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 do. It has a dex of plus two. So slash R1D20 plus two. And it just makes the save. So it takes eight acid damage. An acid damage, you say? Nope, it's only mean fire. Yep, and it is now the owl's turn. All right. Uh, shoot. I think the owl's gonna go behind. <laughs> the owl's gonna like drop the. Uh... It's bright light in here, isn't it? Or is it dim light? It is uh, bright light in that room. Yeah, the owl's just gonna go back over here. <laughs> He's gonna go back. <laughs> and he's gonna stay there for right now. 
I also had to look back at something as I had mistaken the range on a creature. So, unfortunately, Glass, as you moved within that range to attack the big monster, you felt this strange aura begin to surround you that made you feel very uneasy. And, unfortunately, this strange monstrosity over here in the corner that you can just kind of see is giving off some sort of strange aura that made your attacks with reckless normal attacks. You feel you would have been disadvantaged otherwise. So the first attack, would that still have hit? The first attack would actually have just missed, and the second attack would also have just missed. And I it would have missed the right. second attack being 18. So it actually... Oh, wait, the first one attack, your second attack would have actually hit. Sorry. So no. that's a little awkward. <laughs> Can you roll as if you had hit the first time? Or, you know what? Well, I'll just mm-hmm. roll, just take the radiant damage. It also would take five extra. So it would be so 25 that damage. That is 24 plus the five again. So that is, got to give him that. Whoops. Let me do that. And so he would have taken 20 plus 5. No. Yes, 20 plus 5. Sorry about this. This is all my mistake. Oh, gosh. Go back up and fix my dumbness. You can you can decide what you're gonna do. By the way, real while I'm fixing this. Sorry. Okay. I mean, real's gonna um, go ahead and blade song. Okay. I'll click that. So the dog creature is looking a little bit more, a little less than bloodied now. He will go this way, and uh, I guess. He can't really just leave glass there, so he'll go here. Uh, Y'all are getting scared for no reason. It's not that bad. <laughs> well, I got playing. flanking rules. <laughs> anyway, uh, he will bonus. No, I already used my bonus action, so we'll just. Uh, is there any other enemies here? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, he will just swipe out of the silver right here. There we go. 18. So that does hit dealing the wonderful seven damage. And now it's looking <laughs> bloodied as you stab into its nasty dripping hide and its green blood drips. Real is going to like gag a little bit. <laughs> uh, what is your AC now, by the way? Uh, my AC is 21. All right. Thank you for informing me. Yeah. Can you please just it for the moment? I will. And this creature is going to climb down these vines right here. It's rough terrain. So he would just have enough with his dash to get right here coming down from up there. And as he reaches right there, real, you feel this strange aura surround you as well. It makes you feel lethargic and kind of like you're slowly starting to fall apart. Oh. This one is going to climb down as well, and he can make it right a little bit closer. Right here, standing next to you, and you see it open its large and toothy mouth as it tries to bite you, rolling a 20, but that is not enough to hit you, is it? It is not. It almost, it almost snatches your arm, but your magical blade singing protects you. It mostly looks like him doing kind of like a blade dance, so really just sort of dodge out of the turn, way. Yeah. Unfortunately, Riordan your guiding bolt gonna... went to waste. Uh, it's... I... 
<laughs> I am. I couldn't do that anyway, because I was uh, concentrating on giving uh, two AC to class. Right, Riordan's gonna move up here and say, What happened to holding the door? <laughs> Try to see what the hell is going on. So, uh, what you see doesn't look too good, really. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. This is why we hold the door. This is why we... Ah, uh, welcome to the party. <laughs> so, uh, we don't get any kind of saving throw against this aura? No, it is just this strange aura that surrounds the creature. Damn. The Odin is gonna guiding bolt this one. If I can click it. All right. Fling your guiding bolt. Go, my lovely. And that is a successful hit as it rears back from the damage it has taken and glows nice. with a faint radiance around him. And I uh, let me check how much I moved. Uh, I can move back five feet. <laughs> All right. And that's so my So as you move back five feet. This creature is going to start moving. He's going... Whoops. He's going to move... He's going to move this way, and then he's going to move right here behind, um, behind glass, flanking him. It is going to attempt to bite him. So... It rolls an 18, and you have a 17 plus 2. It does not hit. Perfect. This creature right here will begin to move. So, how far can he go? He looks to be avoiding the rougher bits of ground as he dashes over here in this direction. And Riordan, you begin to feel this strange aura surround you as well making you feel lethargic and tired. It is now Mork's turn. All right, I'll come in. And as you enter that range, you begin to feel that strange effect as well, and I believe you are actually moving a mage light and not yourself. I am. <laughs> okay. Strange. Okay, I think I can move up to here and I'll whack this dude with my axe. All right. All right. You swing with your axe. Actually, I'll cast Hunter's Mark first as a bonus action. Aren't you constant? No, wait, you are not concentrating on anything yet. So. Or, or no, I, actually, I might have the guidance. Never mind. For the um. The blessing. Bless. Never mind. I'll just keep the bless and nix the hunter's mark for now. I thought Riordan was the no. Wait, I thought that it was Tim that was. Uh, I thought it was Tim. Yeah. yeah, I'm casting bless. Yeah, it's you not you. Concentrating on anything. It's not you, Mark. Okay, then, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll cast hunter's mark then. On the on the one in front of you. Okay, so he is marked. Then. And I can use the bless to roll more for my attack roll. Do you yeah, not have like a little thing you can turn on? It should be right under your weapon options or whatever. There's a little thing, local attack modifier, D4 bless. Just click a little check mark in there. Okay. Did it? Do you have any problem with your character sheet? Pass again. Let me I'll just roll a d20 and then plus five. Give me a second here. Make sure I got 13. Working. Plus another hmm. d4. Plus another d4. So that would have hit regardless. Wait, actually, I need you to roll me another d20. 
Oh, yeah, it's a disadvantage or whatever. <laughs> nice. So that would have hit, and how much damage do you deal? So it would be 1d8 plus 3 and then 1d6. So roll the 1d8 and the 1d6, and don't forget. So that was the I... for 6 plus 3. So okay. that is a total of 10 damage as you bloody this creature slashing into it, and it looks very beaten up, but it is still standing. Okay, I think that's my turn. All right. So this large canine-looking creature... Let's see here. You see that it its mouth drips a little, but not too much. It seems rather spent, and it's going to attempt to bite glass. With All right. A 17 does not hit you, I assume. Nope. <laughs> its teeth snap and bite at you, but you are expertly avoiding it, blocking it with your axe, sword, whatever weapon you use. It is Tim's turn. Okay. Be a little patient with me, because I have no idea what's going on in that room. So I may need a second to figure out what I want to do. Uh, Ten. I still don't see anything. Yeah, I think these doors are locked from us from a so, visual point. As you enter, as you enter there, Tim, you feel this strange effect start to fall on you too. All right, I think I moved uh, 5, 10, 15 feet once more. Okay, now I can see what's going on. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the party. Cool. All right, I know exactly what to do. I am going to be casting Shatter. Nice. And I'm going to be using my Tempest Cleric ability of Destructive Wrath. And where are you casting it? I want to catch... These two, uh, like these, this guy, this guy, and this guy. It's so a, is... yeah, I should be able to catch them all. What is yeah, the actually. radius? Ten. Yep. Yeah. So let me get all Act of them. Damage. Save. save. <laughs> that is a con save. That is, okay, why did only one of you roll? Okay, so I'll have to do it this way. What level are you casting that at? I can only cast up to level two. Oh. Soon, so, my Soon. <laughs> all right. So the two small guys succeed taking uh, the max damage is three eight, correct? It's twenty four. So they take four damage. So they take twelve damage, and the big one takes the full damage, looking nice. harrowed and very, very. Very bad off as nasty green blood explodes from its Orpheuses. Is that all, Tim? Uh, he will move here. That is his all turn. Right. So this big monster now gets to move. And it is going to move definitely this way, coming right over here, and next to Morks. And it begins to hawk up something strange at you, Morks, and I need you to roll me a constitution saving throw with disadvantage as these strange creatures and their aura is making you a lot less hardy. Don't forget your blast. We went from Darkest Dungeon to Resident Evil. Bless. So, Don't forget bless. Uh, D4. Um, with a max roll, that would not be enough still, unfortunately. Oh, shit. And I need you to make me a constitu another constitution saving throw at disadvantage for your concentration spell. That is to you, Marks. Did you see how much damage you took? In a second. All right. So you take 16 poison damage as your body locks up and this nasty, gross essence begins to crawl all over you. And you are paralyzed by this strange toxin as it then swings at you twice. 
once for a 23, dealing 8 plus 6 acid damage. And a second time for a 25, dealing 10 plus 2 acid damage. So let's add the total up. 16. Okay, plus 6 is 14. So you take... <laughs> Whoops! I have done my math a little wonky there for... Some reason a number turned into sixteen thousand. Oh, you take forty-two damage in total. Oh. Unfortunately, that means your concentration is broken, even if you, um, you know, aren't dead. Is that from one attack? That is from three attacks, as the creature spat on him and then attacked him twice. So, like, the thing is, concentration is, like, it only counts for one attack. Not, like, but all the down damage. down anyway. It doesn't matter. That, that, that's the point. He went down as it does more damage than he has health. 42. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, well, that's, that's, that's the kicker. <laughs> so, <laughs> Morix, I need you to drop your health down to zero for me, if you would so kindly. And it is now Lenari's turn as you see Morks fall to the ground. I don't and see Morks fall to the ground. You don't see anything, actually. You, you, you just hear him fall to the ground. <laughs> no, th no that's why I have no fucking idea what to do right now. Come on in. Hold on. Dy 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 Dynamic sledding fucking things up, so I would meant to move there. 10. You are in 15, a very tight corridor right now. 15, 20 to get past him. Oh, hi. This is a nice situation I've arrived in. Yeah, and oh, you begin to feel that that strange aura surround you now, too. Okay. Uh, 2530. I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this at all. Um, you're feeling tired and kind of sleepy, but you're still standing. What would okay, you do? I think my spirit's just not going to do anything this turn on HP tank. I can't, fuck, I can't cast two spells a turn. Can I take, can I take my movement back, please? Where would, you like, where would you like to go back to? I meant to go right here. Here wounds the person on the ground. All right. You regain five hit points, Morks. And you are no longer bleeding out on the ground, but you are still prone down there. Okay, I still have one question. Was that including what? my dwarven resilience? Um, it was poison damage. Yeah, because I have resistance but against it, poison and advantage on saving throws. Your advantage would have been cancelled out. No, so how would have been 18? If, no, it, it, would have been, it would have been cancelled out by the strange aura that surrounds all of these creatures. It would have just been a straight roll of 8. Yeah. Okay. And so that is, you actually subtract 8 damage from your total. So you took 34 damage in total then. Is the you still, still now there? need to make two concentration saving throws then for your, for your concentration. Okay. So that would be charisma, right? No, it's constitution. That's constitution. You need to constitution. make two Okay, that's right. Sorry. So you succeed, but you fail the second one, unfortunately, as you have disadvantage on that saving throw. Bless, though. Oh, wait. Maybe you'll make it with the bless. So roll a 1d4. Okay. Wait. No. He'd still make it, even if you rolled one, because of how that works. So, yeah, your concentration is actually still up. Wait, so, he, so was he not dead when I went into the room? He would have had one hit point. He would have had... Like, what? Um, eight he hit points. Would, he would have had two hit points. He would have had two hit points left as he would have taken 34 damage. Oh, fuck it. He's got a second HP bar. She doesn't care. <laughs> okay, she wouldn't have healed him. She moves there. And she's going to action cast Moonbeam. Okay. Nice. Uh, I'm going to Moonbeam this fucker and this fucker. All right. So... Mm -hmm. Let's work this together. Also, you were not healed, Mork, so subtract five hit points. 
it's like this. It look. Okay. It's this. Is, it is that a dex or? It's a con. Here, let me ping the spell. Yeah, that's probably the best way to go. Yeah. So the big guy rolls a twelve, and the small guy rolls. Well, hold a five. on. Moonbeam is an interesting spell. I would read it. Oh, I I know how it works. It's just I wasn't sure what the save was. I've used it quite a few times. Uh, I want to cast it like. Uh, sorry, it's hard to put down with a sphere. Uh, like this, so it should catch three of them. All right. I'm not sure the big guy is enough in it to be targeted in that way. Uh, here, can I move around that uh, little purple thing? I've made it. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. The big guy <laughs> is not covered enough by it to be affected. But then I'll move it over a bit to affect, to affect the big guy. All right. So then he rolled a 12, and the smaller guy rolls a 5. So roll the damage. Okay, they both fail. First time using a second level spell. Ooh, that is quite meaty if they both look very badly injured. One of them actually going down. What happens to him as the smaller guy falls to the ground? Because I want it to hit the big guy and the little guy. I um, get you. It hit. Cool. But it kills the smaller guy. Cool, cool. Um, bonus action, command fire spirit to run forward. Um, he takes the off attack from the big, from the big guy. If the big guy okay. wants to take the off attack. So it takes the bite with advantage from pack tactics. Ooh, okay, would it take the bite bite when it's literally pure fire? Um Yes, and it rolled a crit, even without advantage, for twenty damage. I was gonna try to do something clever fiery teleport to get the paladin out of there, but you know what? <laughs> Unfortunately, your little friend explodes to death. That is okay. snapped in the jaws of the larger creature. Lunari looks pissed now. <laughs> is that your turn? Yes. A little glass. Oh, what messed up. Does this guy look? Oh, he is on death's door, dripping, bleedy everywhere. But you are still surrounded by that strange, entropic feeling. Which one? The one behind you? He is fully yeah. healthy, but he is... He looks a little squishier compared to the other two. Gotcha, gotcha. Alright, let's try finish this guy off. I'm gonna recklessly attack. Uh, 15 to hit. That does 16. hit. And how do you kill him as you deal a little extra damage than he had health? <laughs> I just slice his head clean off. And as you do, acidly, acid blood begins to squirt all over the ground. Thankfully, none of it on you. Thankfully, indeed. And then I'll move in between these guys, and I'll recklessly attack this one. Okay. I have a plus two, right? Um. Because reels right there. Oh yes, you would actually. Oh, doesn't even and matter. Fortunately, with disadvantage, you go completely wide. I'm recklessly wide. attacking. But the intrepid... Oh, wait, you're right. So that would have canceled out. So you kill him. Perfect. How, and... how do you absolutely obliterate this guy? Because, yeah, he's, he's way dead. He is instantly... I cut his head clean off, and then I attack this one with my bonus action, recklessly. All right. Ah, uh, if only. Unfortunately, that one does survive. Uh, let's see. So that took me 15 feet. I'll circle around the back so Reel doesn't have to go too far to get his little flanking. And that'll be the Owl. end of the turn. What's Owl gonna do? Alright, um, if I can fucking see my Owl. Hold on. There he is. Alright. Um, the Owl's gonna get a little bit of a ping from uh, Reel mentally. And he's gonna come flying in uh, right there, and then he's gonna move a bit further. Let's see, can he go here? Yes, he can. He can move there, uh, do the help action on that guy, and fly away. And the owl then flies away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, by the way, he left the lantern. Um, in the in the hallway there. Ryu, it's your turn. This room is very nice and bright though because of the crystal in the center. Yeah. Ryu will go up 
and will now attack this guy with an advantage and a plus two. It, it, it cancels out. Let's see how you do. All right, I'm going to use my bonus action to reform the Shadow Blade. All right. Well, I'm casting it, so, you know. Uh, and I'm going to attack. Come on. Oh, Does it well? Well? Um, You do not hit, unfortunately. Damn it. Close. Actually, right. no, that, that would just meet it. Wow. Just hey, nice. Nice. <laughs> And you so kill this creature. Let's see. How do you kill him? Um, Rio essentially like like he whistles and the owl runs into the room and sort of latches onto this dude's head and while it's trying to claw the owl off, the owl just jumps off him and Rio comes up, slides into it, and slices its head off with the shadow blade. And it is dead on the ground, laying there with a big red X over him, just so you know that he is that dead. Nice. Do you have any other things you can do in your action or with your turn? Uh, that is all I can do. Then it is now Riordan's turn. Riordan is going to poke his head around the... Oh, boy. <laughs> These two are the only ones left, correct? Yes. Well then, as my bonus action, Riordan will cast Spiritual Weapon oh, over here somewhere. It is a white fox. That does not hit, unfortunately. Ah, uh, you sure? Will a 14 it hit? Is Actually, never mind, it's straight. The Entropic Sword is cancelling it out, remember that. Yes. So yeah. it would have been a 7. Give me one. Straight Can I get a token for the uh, thingy? For the Spiritual Weapon? Let's see. It's another owl. Cool. Fantastic. It's an owl. <laughs> I will and fix that later. As my main weapon, uh, main action, I will raise my shield in the air and invoke the might of Corallon. Darkness is deep here, O God of Light. Help us. And I will cast Radiance of the Dawn. All right. Please ping that. So that is the dexterity saving throw. Yes. Con save. No, wait, that's con save. I thought it was con. Man. No, wait. So the smaller guy makes the save, and the big guy. Does he make the save? Hey, sorry. Um, can he cast two spells in one turn like that? It's a, not that a is spell. that is his um, channel divinity. Ah. That is channel divinity. So they both make the save, five damage, taking yeah. five damage as they are very lightly burned by the heavenly light around you, and you feel that your god did not give her best, or his, or his best, or its best. Cool. And then I will roll back out. <laughs> Good Lazy luck, guy. you got this. <laughs> Good call. That's my <laughs> Good call. <clears throat> All right, so this guy right here is going to move and flank more. He provokes. Uh, from what? From Tim. He has his glaive out, and he uh, is a warcaster. Ah, I see. Wait, that's warcaster doesn't work that way. Uh, yes, it does. Warcaster with polearm mastery. Oh, Both you should have said you had polearm mastery. Sorry, I, 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 they, they go together in my head. <laughs> uh, right. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to whack him with my pole arm, though. I, I need to save some spells. <laughs> okay. uh, where is my glaive? There it is, Tim. Ooh, nice. that's, a that's a good roll. And you just kill him as he moves into your range. How do you do it? Uh, I stab him through the gut and then slice him in half. And he is down, down, down for the count. So now it's Mork's turn. Make me a con save. No longer at disadvantage. This is just okay. normal. Nice. And you break out of this paralysis, but it takes your turn, unfortunately. Okay, so that's all I can Whoops. do. You're not dead. The dog monster is dead. So it is Tim's turn. Oh, I we only have one guy left. I'm gonna be uh, saving my spells. Then I'm gonna just trying to move my guy. I can't move him. Why can't I move him? 
Um, it might be because you have something on top of you. Wait, where even are you? Here. Ah, so you're stuck in the wall. That's why. Could you move them for me then? There you go. You should Thank be able to you. move them now. All right, let me move this light out of the way. Okay, with that, he should have reach of Mr. Big Guy, and he's going to attack him with his pole arm. So, sorry, Glaive. All right. Glaive. Come on. Ooh, that's wow. a good glaive. Another good hit for seven damage. He is looking very beaten, battered, and bloodied, but he is up next. All right, no one is dead right now, right? No. Or no. Down, down, should I say, because I thought Mr. Morks was down at one point. He was at one point. All right, then that's his turn. So the big creature is going to move here. Uh, Moonbeam, right? Um, wait, is it the start of its turn? Let me take a quick I don't look. know how Moonbeam works. Again. That's why I ask. Here, so I'll, the big um... creature hits the surface here for the first time or starts its turn in there, it is engulfed. So technically, when he first takes the damage, that was because he would start his turn in there as the reading yeah. of the writing goes. Yeah, okay. We did the rolls a little early, but it didn't change anything. That's what I thought. That's why I was like, oh, he takes the damage yeah. now. He's right. going to look at you, Tim, and I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. All righty. Bam. Ooh, and a... you are paralyzed, taking 13 poison damage, and I need you to make me another con save for your bless. Well, at least I have a warcaster for that. Nice. Yeah. And you do manage to king to hold on to it as the creature is going to squeeze his way right over, kind of right here as best he can. He cannot reach you, so he is going to swipe twice at Boris. At, uh, at Boris Bork. at Bork. <laughs> Boris. Bork, Bork, Bork. <laughs> and he rolls a thirteen on the first hit and a twenty-three on the second hit. Uh, twenty-three hit. And you take 12 damage in total, 8 slashing, and 4 acid. Okay, I'm down. And that does down, <sighs> that does down the poor dwarf. And let's see, get rid of that, and put him down on the ground. Does the creature's turn, Lenari? Um, it's fucking dying. Okay. Right. Moonbeam is going right on him. Okay. And it's it procs damage, I think. It still says that it procs damage at the start on of the creature's of turn. Damage. Wait, hold on. Uh, when a creature enters this, enter, yeah, when a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn, so would it be entering the area because I'm moving it, it on it? To be willingly, this it's the same thing for so, Wall of Fire and like any other a spell that stays on the ground, pretty much. The only difference will be at the start of the turn or end of its turn. Okay, no one attack it, so it feels like I usually use a second level spell, please. That's not going to happen to me. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, mean, I think glass would... No, wait, you could actually just engulf the entire creature because of how large it is. Yes, I'm just going to engulf the entire creature with it. I, I was going to be a dick to glass and put it right, right where glass would move. <laughs> I mean, I can squeeze in here and get to him. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I still okay. Anyway, the moonbeam is going directly on him. <laughs> all right, so he is glowing. Is that all you can do, Lenari? I guess. I guess you'll heal the paladin. <laughs> I guess. All I guess. And you pop back up, works with six hit points. All right. I'm just casting fucking Flame Blade next time, end of her turn. <laughs> uh, so, Glass, it is now your turn. Sweet, I can easily make it over there. And recklessly attack. And, and I get true advantage this time. And Glass accidentally trips over the dead dog, <laughs> but he doesn't. <laughs> you imagine. Uh, 23 and, to hit for Yeah, it's 30. dead. <laughs> so how how dead is he though? Is the question. <laughs> you don't even have to hit him more than once. <laughs> that felt like it. Insult to these guys. <laughs> so how do you finish the big guy? Uh, I just cut his head off. That's what glass does. <laughs> I just run feet He's over. Very, very simple man. <laughs> exactly. Sword raised high above my head. 
jump over uh, Mork's ear and <laughs> slice this guy's head off. And it is dead. And that is the end of combat. And you can hear Yay. a gentle voice begin to speak again. Oh, it saddens me to see them in this, this, this sort of state. It saddens me that I wish a fucking second level spell song in their fucking asses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Moonbeam is good when it works, but it's very rare. Like, for more than one turn. All right, guys, I'm going to step away real quick. No, Tim did not go down. He wasn't touching this fight at all. Uh, I, I need to step away real quick because I need to let the dog out to go pee real quick. Be right back. So, we would like, like to the combat the is crystal. crystal. All right, make an arcana check. All right. Don't be like the last person who looked at it who somehow managed to fail three times in a row. No. Oh, goodness no. gracious, how is this possible? <laughs> this, this, is crystal emanates, this crystal emanates massive magical energy and power, but unfortunately you're just not sure what kind of crystal or what, what, what it is, really. But it seems to be producing actual usable sunlight for these plants all around. Huh. You know what? I'm a wizard. I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna step back. <laughs> Roll me a strength check. Okay, just straight strength? Just straight strength check. Ten. As you reach your hands to grab it, you begin pulling, but it doesn't budge, and you feel your hands slightly cut by its sharp, jagged edges. They burn a little from this strange crystal, but it's not oh. enough to actually harm you. I'm like... I just right. look around like uh... that. I need your help. This thing's an <laughs> agricultural <laughs> masterpiece. Am I still I raging need... by chance? Well, that depends. Did you decide to end your rage or not? It's only been a few seconds. It's been All a few right, minutes. quickly, we quickly. We haven't attacked anything. <laughs> that, that, I don't need advantage anyway. It would have so been less it would have just been a strength check. It would have just been a plus four, correct? Uh, plus three. Yeah, a plus three. Unfortunately, you are not strong enough to pull this out either, Glass. As you reach in and start grabbing it, you feel it budge for a moment before it sinks back in. Dang. How about we don't touch every shiny crystal and investigate the room first? I mean, so, it's making sunlight, guys. Like, and you like want to turn it sunlight. off? Mark, here you go. You try this. And here, take this. <laughs> just make it athletics, or? It is actually just a straight strength check. Anybody want to give him that guidance? I have guidance. I can do <laughs> guidance. I have it. Okay. All right, Roll Mark. Roll a 1d4. And still, let's see. No, that wouldn't have been enough. Oh, no. You try prying this out, and you get a little bit closer this time, the crowbar helping a little bit. But unfortunately, this thing, when it's almost out, it sinks right back in as something pulls it back. If it's not pulled out successfully and quickly, it is pulled back in by whatever is keeping it there. Dang it. Well, who else is strong here? Tim, you give it a chance. Uh, sure, what am I uh, flexing for? The is going to right, cast guidance crystal. on himself. Neither of us can get it, get out, get it out, and take this uh, crowbar. It'll give you a hand. All right, athletic <laughs> then. It is no, a strength check, right. just straight strength. Okay, I will cast uh, guidance on myself. Straight up strength. Bam. Nice. Oh, and without the guidance, you finally manage to pry it out as you use the crowbar grabbing with your other hand and you pull and yank it right out of the ground. And you're holding it in your hand and it begins to burn really hot for a second. Like it's going to burn through your glove or your skin, but then it's gone just as quickly. And it starts to dim as the room goes dark. 
Well, it doesn't, because I cast Light on the Bones here. <laughs> Well, remember, it's not going to go dark because Tim has a continual flame. And we have the uh, lantern here at the bottom. Yeah. So we're good. Make sure to keep your light on you. It got stuck on the wall, so that's why I didn't have it on me. There we go. Well, so what you guys can also see just off to the side of the room over here is several fresh bloodied bodies on the ground, melted glass here shattered glass up here and it looks like a small little altar that's sitting a morbid little reminder with a skull on top of it and you see several chunks of metal sitting on it as well okay tim would like to go over there and check out the metal as you draw closer towards it over here that is you have to go up that way, where the glass is melted. You can see piles of bones right here as well, where it looks like something slumbers sometimes. As you see, they are arranged in a way to create a nice hole in the center. Like a nest? Yes, like a nest. Though you figure with any commotion that occurred in here, they would have come out if they were, if they were in there at the time. Gross. Or would they? <laughs> uh, hello, I'm back. What happened? So, uh, they all basically fumbled trying to pull a crystal out of the ground until Tim finally got it. Excuse me, <laughs> okay. I didn't even... Sorry, I started a, a new medicine today called Accutane, so I had to get for some food. Alright. No worries. So, Tim. These bodies on the ground are all drippy and still very new. They are skinned completely, as it seems one of those creatures was smart enough to know how to use tools. You see a blade sitting next to them. None of these bodies look human in any way, but they have a human shape. Their mouths are large, filled with sharp teeth. Their fingers are long and clawed, and their heads peeled back with tight skin, and most of them have no eyes. Hmm. Well, whatever abomination this was, it was, it's dead now, and if it was good, I offer a prayer for it. If it wasn't so good, I will not. Well said. <laughs> uh, Tim would like to look at the metal, see if that can be added to our pile. All right, well, Tim and Real begin approaching the altar. You begin hearing the voice again, though it doesn't sound like the one that was talking to you earlier. It just speaks softly. It shall always come. All things end. And that is the inevitability. Yeah. And real, you don't even have to look. You can see that there is at least one chunk of gold large enough to take and two pieces of silver as well. God damn. We almost done, boys. We're barely half. See, though. I so, have it written down that we have six, two, and one. One gold, two silver, eight iron. Oh wait, we got we got eight iron. We got eight. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding the time. You have one gold and two silver. Save changes, and let me show that to the players just so you all can see it. Nice. nice. You are making great oh, time. Yeah. Yeah. But you also notice you can't hear the Chamberlain anymore. His voice is no longer reaching you in the depths of this place. Oh. Oh, time to investigate well, the rest fine. of it. Do we need another short rest? Otherwise, I say we keep going. We could use a short rest. I'm okay, but if yeah. we need a short rest, we could take it. This place feels dangerous to take a short rest in. You're not <laughs> sure it would be on the Not necessarily in here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not in here, but let's go. <laughs> um, I believe there was something on the left side of this room as well. There yeah, is a ledge. Climb. The vines are perfectly fine to climb on. Okay. And so let me do this. What you see up there is a skeletal frame sitting in a chair overlooking the strange room that you were all in. There's old dried blood behind him. Several 
plush chairs that still look relatively preserved and fresh are aligning the wall and sitting in front of the of the whole area is like some sort of observation room. There are a few broken desks and one with scrumpy, crumpled old paper as well in the northern corner of the room. Hmm. I'll go check um, it out. So this dog creature, was it like actually canine? Or was it, it just like four-legged? It looks like it was a canine at some point in its existence. That makes me real sad. Glass, the paper you look at there is old and torn by age and time. A little bit spittle and creatures that looks like they have gone through it and torn and bitten it and chewed on it a little bit. It's practically illegible, unfortunately. Yeah, who knew, Mindy? I believe... um, Wait, who did know Mending? Was that Tim Riordan? No. Not me. I have Mending. Well, you are... Uh... You try your best, but I think you would need this Mending hand press to digitation or whatever it is. Uh, can I... Can you ping Mending for me? So unrelated, but something you may want to look at. I'm trying to drag the measurement tool on the map, and it's not letting me. Yeah, same. I tried that earlier. I have no idea what could be stopping that, because... Oh, make sure that you're set to the proper ruler. To the proper ruler? No, no. The, in in the object, have... in, in the journal, objects. you know how we have the torch, and then there's the AOE measurement tool? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, I can't use it for some Wait. I mean, you don't have to fix it now. I'm just letting it know. Yeah, exactly. It's not a big deal. That is a little strange. Maybe that should help regardless. So, let me take a look at that mending again real quick. Oh, there you go. I got it in there. All right. So, the spell repairs bring or tear in an object. It repairs a single break or tear in an object, such as a broken chain link, two halves of a broken chain, a torn cloak. As long as the break or tear is no longer than one foot in any dimension, you mend it, leaving no trace of former damage. The spell can physically repair a magical item or construct, but the spell can't restore magic to such an item. Well, you do reconstruct the paper. That is easy enough to do with your spell, but unfortunately the thing that isn't so easy is fixing the droplets and strange liquids that have fallen on the paper making most of it illegible <laughs> but what you can gather by looking at what is still there is this these are some sort of papers on research documenting the changes of creatures exposed to those crystals for a long period of time uh, Tim drops the crystal and put, put, uh, put. Actually, he'll just pick up the crystal and put it in Warden's hands. Like, here you go, buddy. And Enjoy. you also you also notice that it says it was when the crystals were infused with necromantic magics that it caused these mutations in creatures. He's still gonna There's hand some... that off. <laughs> <laughs> There's also some mention of the Harbinger teaching them this information. Uh, yeah, I get rid of the crystal. Real is like, just drop it. He's like, he's so easy. Real's almost, almost about to cry. But he's like, just drop it. So are you going Terrible. to leave the crystal after all? What are they leaving? Yeah. Would kind of suck if those kinds of monsters started appearing on the surface. So, you know. Why would you leave it? I guess it's fine if it, if you have to activate it with necrotic energy. Tim will pick it up again. Hey, let's go. This is what we came for. This is what the old guy wanted, right? This is like the yeah, bonus thing. Maybe. Is it? He, he asked you to destroy the creature or whatever source is in the center. But he did say he would be interested in bring if you brought back any strange things you saw down there. Okay. Where would uh, you go now? That crystal rod that was in the uh, generator thing. 
uh, the crystal rod, if you take that out, all the power in that area you were in goes completely off. Yeah, Ruel will take it, though, and he'll put it in his back. All right. Yeah, sure the old man will be interested in that as well. Yeah. So, right. where are you going now? I so, think we head did we north come from start making room? our way back. Oh, I'm very confused. Were we in this room yet, or did we... You've not been the... to the... You just finished I mean, this room right here. The oh, plan sure. was to uh, try to see what this thing is. Yeah. And if we can't fight it, we use the breed, and then we go back and collect resources. Oh, yep. so that fight that we were on was not the, the, the boss in here? No, I don't think no. so. No. Oh. No. All right. More fun. Let's do it. Let's get in there. Uh, I need the shoulders from going there. Probably uh, a good idea, too. Up to you guys. It is. Don't it care. Is... I definitely need a short rest. It right, is definitely safe. unsafe to rest here, so you can move back to one of the places you've been. Mm. All right, that takes 15 minutes? Yep. Or do you guys right, want to plow yeah, let's, forward, let's... clear this out, and then take a short rest? I think uh, we should move back to a place we've gone. Um, second option. Short rest. What's this? So, so go back? Yeah. All right. Go back. Short rest, and then we come back over here. Yeah, that'll take that... thirty minutes total. Well, an hour and a half total, because it's fifteen minutes to go back, take a rest, and then fifteen minutes to get back here. What a oh. good downtime, though. I mean, how bad off is everyone? I say we I... can go down with uh, the non-boss room. Yeah, and, I agree. And, yeah, and, and then point. take care of whatever's over there, and then go into the boss room. Well, technically, this one was a non-boss room as well. <laughs> Yeah, and we survived. <laughs> yeah, that room was very yeah. easy. I shouldn't have used a second level spell there. It seemed harder than it was. Like we psyched ourselves out. I think. I uh, thought that that was the boss room. That's why I was like, "Oh God." I mean, once I got honest, in there, I thought it wouldn't be too bad. I mean, to be honest, rules is role playing there. T would have been scared of that thing. <laughs> like, character. All right. So votes for going down. Sure. Well, if you know, yeah. if there's some, if there's even one person who wants to take a short rest, I say we take a short rest. I mean, I'm okay. I've only used one spell slot, so, and I'm at full health. I have yeah, one I second level and two lost. first level. I, right. Like, if you're hurt, just stay in the bag. Yeah, let's move. Let's move down to the next hex then. It might not even oh, any comp, be any combat. It might not even be combat exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I'll cast Lay on Hands just in case. And how much are you healing for with that Lay on Hands? Um, 15 is so much I can do. All right. So, <clears throat> you move down to the second part of the old abandoned building. And you notice the walls in this area are a little less well kept, a little bit more wild and cracked and broken. It seems a lot less active as well. There don't seem to be as many creatures around. It's quiet. Very quiet. Too no. quiet. <laughs> Too quiet. <laughs> Though, as you begin making your way through, let's see. Um, so, Tim, Lenari, and Riordan, you all notice a strange figure flickering up above near the roof for a few seconds. This purplish orb of energy that seems to pulsate and disappear repeatedly. You begin to feel a shaking in the ground as it seems the rocks and the floor beneath you begin to crack open and split wide into a rather strange and sudden chasm that is beginning to break apart the room and definitely brings its dangers. I need everyone to make me a dex acrobatics or a um, athletics check. Okay, I'll make athletics. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off uh, guidance. 
Goodness me. And can I use guidance or no? Mm, not in this case. This is very sudden. It is happening right now. But you are all very, very... Oh, I scored an at 20, so I'm fine. You're all very, very um, quick on the hand as you turn back quickly and you are forced back as the room in front of you begins to collapse and the way is blocked, unfortunately. But none of you are harmed as you try to make it back in this direction, going back to the last place you were, forced by the collapsing room. Ugh. We couldn't find any places to do a rest or while we went south. Unfortunately, you didn't make it far enough in to do that. Let's go west. Right. We went with our plan. Uh, shall we instead move here? Yeah, yeah. let's go there. All so, right. That took 15 minutes, pre taking you up to the two hour mark. We still got like f f five hours and we're almost done. Yeah, we're doing all right. We have like six hours. We have eight hours total, so we have like six more hours. You have to remember it takes 15 minutes each one to get back, though. Yeah, but we can teleport back if we have to. Okay. I say we go up like. Right. So, you head into. Are you going? Oh, like Wait. This way, I say. I, I vote here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you all head into this area next. The halls and this, the lights are back on in this area, and it looks lively again. You can hear slight movement every so often at the corner of your ears. You can swear you see shadows every so often. But this seems like a rather empty location, however. Perfect for a short rest. All right, yeah. While we're resting, can we look around to see if there's any kind of ore at all? Well, let me do something before any of you get comfortable. Let's see. So you all begin to kind of settle in, thinking, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to take our time with at this time, at this moment? And you're all starting to relax, some of you investigating the areas around. And you begin to hear sounds coming through the halls, echoing loudly, creatures scratching, rumblings. All right, get ready, uh, everybody. It seems like we got visitors. Finally. Sure. Looks like we're going to have to fight for our nap. Yeah. So, well, we could hide in case they pass. Not in my armor, no. <laughs> mm, I mean, I don't know how well I'm, or how good I am at hiding. Eh. I know exactly Let's how fight. well I am good at hiding. Not. If I could see where everything was, I could lay some of this out and trap these guys. All right. But, so. This is where no. you all are when you hear the sounds, having found this little area to take a rest in. It looks like it looks like people have already been through here too. One of the first groups looks like they have kind of dealt with this area at one point, but you hear movement coming from both the bottom and the um down from the south end to the east. All right, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and put some caltrops down. I have five caltrops and two ball bearings. All right, you all have... Let's see. I'll let you move your maximum speed to one location you want. And do, like, one action? Yes. All right, great. I'll put some caltrops. Lenar is just going to get down here. Or actually, I shared he moved. Uh, Tim will spread out a little bit in case there's an AOE. Yep, good call. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. shit, I can't see anything here. Ah, ah, get me out. I locked myself into whatever this is. Mm. Oh, there we go. I'm out. Come on, guys. I'm oh, trying to like, spread out. Stop trying to uh, like crowd me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to hide beside this door and get ready to shoot. <clears throat> 
So, you also heard them coming from the south, and everyone has moved to their spot, correct? Mm-hmm. Roll yeah. initiative. Nice. Yes, give me that now. Uh, wait, no, that wasn't that one. That was just a three. <laughs> At level 10. Uh, I just want to note real quick that the owl is uh, high I up don't... in the air. All right. Yeah, he's like, how far is the ceiling? The ceiling in this room is about 30 feet high, so it is quite okay. high, actually. So the owl will be like 25 feet up. Come on. And let me start Man. this off. The as you hear really garbage. <laughs> as you hear movement coming from the south, Lenari, the first creature moving. Oh, of course it's fucking me. You see this strange bloated creature running into the room. Let's see, he runs right here and Try drips with this nasty pulsating ooze from his body to the first thing he can see, which is unfortunately an Lunari. And he swings his claws, rolling an eight to hit. Oh, missing. Fuck you. thank goodness. Let's see, it is now your turn. Haha, <laughs> burn time. <laughs> burn time. Oh, burn time, burn time. Make me that deck save. All right, so. A save of the dexterity sort. And he rolls a seven. Really crappy damage, but you know. And he is a little bit crispy on his bum. Mm, okay, that's nice. Uh, opening teleport. Or, sorry, yeah, fiery teleport away. So. Nice. And this time he rolls a 13 exactly. Okay, that if it meets, it beats. Takes no damage, but I am away. And you teleport over there, kind of landing on a bit of gross old blood on the ground. And as your turn comes to an end, if you aren't going to move anywhere. I can't, because the spirit does that... At the spirit goes to the end of my turn, so it would have fiery teleported me when I already went. Yeah. All right. So then, let's see. Next up is a guy in the room to the east, and he comes running in. So let's see. Five, 10, 15, 20. And he steps on the caltrops. Um, can you, do you have anything you can ping for the caltrops? I did. It's a DC 15 deck save, or he has to stop moving. All right. So let's make that save. I mean, or he could move half half speed through the uh, spot. And he actually manages to make a 14, so he gets stuck there. And... He takes one damage, and his speed is reduced by 10 until he gains <laughs> his health. And he's um... stuck there. All right. For so, this he takes one damage and is stuck there for now. It is Tim's turn. Man, I gotta get some caltrips. They're pretty nice. Uh, Tim, the guy at the bottom has been hit, right? This dude. Yep. He got hurt by the fire. Told the dead. Nice. So, will he make it? Does he have the skills to make a wisdom saving throw? And as things tend to go with this spell, he actually fails and takes six necrotic damage. But... Right. Yes, he but. takes the full six necrotic damage. Does he? He is not special in any way. He is just very <laughs> wounded. Um... Quick question: Would do they look like they're undead? 
They don't look undead at all. They look pulsating, bloated, but they look very much alive. You can see their chests moving with breaths. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say pulsating and bloating. That doesn't narrow it down much. <laughs> <laughs> but you see him breathing, his chest heaving with air. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's my turn. Real. It's your turn. All right. Real will go here and go ahead and uh, I think he'll firebolt on this one. All right. Firebolt. Wow. And your firebolt goes wide and goes on the wall. That's a minute. Yep. Is that all your movement? Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to do for right now. Riordan, it's your turn. And someone oh. actually, two things actually managed to roll worse than glass. Oh, give you wow. time. I'm going to do it Very as well. <laughs> Today is definitely not my day. So there's two of them and two more coming, as far as we can tell? Yep. Uh, Riordan is going to move over here so we can actually see stuff. Why do you have to be so far, glass? <laughs> and move down here. Well, hello, there's more coming over there. And he will raise his shield in the air, say a small prayer to you, Corlone, and cast Bless. Oh, nice. On Glass. Riul. And anyone else doing regular damage? Regular attack? Well, you've got your uh, you've you've got your paladin um, up there, and Tim. Uh, give it to Mister uh, Paladin. I think Morks is more melee than I am. Ah, right, and Tim. What is it? Bless. Bless. Okay. And then, well, let me calculate this. And then I will move over here, and then my turn. All right. So, Glass, your turn is up now. All right, perfect. Bonus action rage and reckless attack. Oh. <laughs> we won't regret it. And we you won't. somehow managed to miss the first one, and the second one deals enough damage to kill him easily, though, as he dies, he bursts into this fetid, gross cloud next to you. I need you to make me a constitution crap. saving throw. Yes. 19. So you take six poison damage, taking half of... Mm, wait, you take nine poison damage, taking half of what he would have done. I don't know if you're... Uh, wait, are you raging or not? I'm always you raging. You are raging, so... That's you, the secret cap. You don't... You don't... <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you um, actually have resistance to that at all? I'm not the... All right, then you one. No. So, this guy is going to come in right over here. And you see him shove his friend forward out the door with his action. And he is then going to take the, take the trip. Uh, you know, you know, you my movement, though. Huh? I I'm not going to stand right here. <laughs> I'll let this guy draw himself in. Oh, That was only 10 feet. I'll move more to the, like, right here so I can get an idea of what's going on over here as well. I am used to you ending your turn after killing something. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So this guy right here is going to push his friend out of the Caltrops, and he is going to take the dance himself, rolling a... Exactly a 15 on the save. So okay. does he just get to keep going? Yep. He's going to dart rushing as Nothing far as down right to here. Or just nah, he only gave me one action. So. Uh, yep. or I would... He will move right here. That is as far as he can get. Marks, it's your turn. All right. So the tank kind of changed me up a little bit. Okay, so. So, from where you actually are, there is a glass window in front of you. I am sorry if you couldn't see it. 
you would have to kind of squeeze where Tim or Ryu are to get out. Hmm? Oh. Could I move here or? Yes, you could. Okay, you I'll move there. there. So this then... entire thing is a glass window. So... Wait, yeah, he would be able to move there because there is rough terrain. There's no window where Tim is, but he is rough terrain. So you would just be able to make it there, essentially. Okay, because I'm a dwarf, so my movement speed's 25. Oh, then you would actually have gotten stuck. So, so like, can I move here, or? So, let's see. You have 25 speed, so you moved there. That's up to 15, and that would have been another 10 feet, so you could not have moved through him at all. You would have had to have ended your turn right here. Okay, that's fine. Where is this window? It is right above you. I know it's a little hard to see. You have to zoom in. Right. It's on the map. Those thin-looking planes are windows. <laughs> so wait, why can't you just go like... Or like uh, this? I don't get it. It's the windows. There's a broken window where you were standing, Tim. So this marks a broken window. Yes, those are broken windows down there as well. Okay. And there is one over here. Wasn't yeah. Tim standing here though? Uh, oh, I mean, I I didn't move. I don't think. Oh, okay. Well, he has not problem. moved. Tim did not move. He was still in the same spot. Is there even a broken window there? I don't see. Like I, I'm, maybe I'm blind. I don't see anything that, that says like a window or what is broken. <laughs> Why is there a window? window. <laughs> There's no real indicator there. It's just that's supposed to be a broken window, but the map is broken, unfortunately. I'll have to put that in later. That's okay. We'll just do a little thing on the so, floor. You see the broken windows where the glass is supposed to be on the ground. I'm gonna chuck my javelin at this one right here. Um. How would you have gotten there? You told me I could move to here. But that's the thing. If where you were standing, you would have you would have had to have gone through um what's his uh <laughs> So that would have been ten feet. That would have been twenty-five feet to go through him in the end. You would not have been able to pass through Tim, unfortunately, on this turn without dashing. I am so confused with this window business. Yeah, I, I I'm confused too. All right, so like you gotta be here. You can't go anywhere but here right now. Okay, so I'll go right. here. Then I'll chuck my javelin. Behind, um, yes, you can't be anywhere but behind Tim at this time. Okay, can I chuck my javelin at this one, or am I behind something? Oh wait, you said he he was right here so ten, twenty, and then twenty-five. So that would have been ten, and then another ten to go through you. So that would have brought him up to twenty. Yes, you no wait. So you're right. The counting is a little funny. You would have just actually been able to get out. You can get right here. Here? You will not have here. any penalties after all. You can just get right there. Okay. So I'll go right here, and I'll chuck my javelin at this guy. I could have a nice square number like 30. <laughs> Oh my god. Is it not working again? Yeah, alright. I'll just roll d20 plus 5. And then I can use a bless. So that would have hit without the bless. Okay, and then my damage would be 1d6 plus 3. Alright, so... So 7 points of damage. The javelin gets stuck in him, causing a light amount of damage to him. All right, that's my turn. It is this guy's turn now. And he comes rushing in, so... He makes it up to glass. You see his large, strange-looking hands begin to rise up as he looks like he's about to recklessly attack you, Glass. All right. And he rolls an 18 on the first hit. You that are hits. not... Yeah. All right, so he deals five bludgeoning damage. I have to two. 
And he deal he rolls a 17 on the second hit for eight bludgeoning damage. Four, so six total. And he rolls a 20 on the last hit for 11 bludgeoning damage. I have to five. And he lets out a loud scream. His little droplets of blood drip from his mouth. Yeah, yeah, very intimidating. This guy's dead. So it is the owl's turn. <laughs> All right, uh, the owl will fly down 25 feet and uh, help action on this guy right here. And okay. he will fly back over here. All right. To right here. <clears throat> and I'll turn. Lenari. Do, do, do create bonfire on this jerk. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm in ruler, not ping. Okay. So save Dex. He rolls a five. How much fire damage does he take? He takes three, three little fire damage. And doesn't look too good as his toes are burning. Um, the bonus action command: fire spirit to flame seed it. Fire spirit's turn now. It flame seeds. Nice. What is it flame seeding at? Uh, the same thing I create bonfired. Okay. So let's see. That is another four damage to him. And he is now looking close to a bloodied state, dripping, oozing his strange acids. EOT. And it is now <laughs> this one's turn as your turn ends. This guy right here, he his speed is reduced by ten. But that's not enough to stop him from getting all the way over here. Yeah, he provokes. Alright. Um... And he provokes an attack of opportunity in the middle of two of your friends. <laughs> what? Let's see. So he takes three slashing damage, dripping and oozing his little blood as he is going to swing at real for a... Tw nope, that is a 13 to hit. That does not hit, does it? Does not. All right. So you take no damage. Nice. And it is now Tim's turn. Okay. Uh... Tim shall move down one square. He'll attack again with the glaive. Blech. Right over your short friend. <laughs> well, technically dwarves aren't small. Did it go through? I don't see it yet. Uh, again? Why? Oh god, did it, did it break? <laughs> All right, it looks like it broke. Let me roll manually. Uh, plus oh, roll 20. You gotta love it. Okay, I, I typed it in manually, and it's still rolling the dice. Um, it sounds you... like your internet is failing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I went through oh. all three of us. So, well, the first one would have hit, dealing all 11 right. slashing damage to him. A 9 hit? Yes, a 9 nice. hit. Well, the first one's a 13. I have 13, 9, and a 10. No, the 13 was your opportunity attack, remember? Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So I just jumped up, I lost it. Yeah, so I guess a 9 is a hit. Yep. And that's going to be his standard, and he's going to move back 1. And that's his turn. That is not broken glass right there. Yeah, you can't move there. I cannot move there. Okay, so here, and then here. Can I move there? Yes, you can move there. That was where the broken glass was. <laughs> All right, so hang on. How, how far did I move so far? I was here. Five, you have moved 10, a total 15, of not a lot. 20. Okay, so I'll just reposition myself one square back back. Oh my god, roll to 20. Uh, this fucking thing is annoying. There we go. And as you finish your turn. I think I picked up the owl bar accident. Oh, there it is Real's turn. All right, Rio momentarily wonders what the evolutionary advantage of a death purse is, but. It's whatever. These look like <laughs> mutated creatures. Who knows why? Uh, Ryu will go here. He'll take an attack of opportunity. So, uh, see, does a 21 hit you? Uh, yes, it does. You take... So, six slashing and two necrotic damage. Oof. Minus eight. All right. And he will go ahead and try to 
Yeah. He'll just take out his longbow and shoot at her. <laughs> yep. I will shoot at you from 10 feet away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Point blank longbow. And uh, that is a 10 hit. Damage. 10 so damage. It takes 10 damage, looking very close to erupting. All right. Run uh, away! That's going to be my turn. So you are in it. It's now your turn. All right. What exactly do I need to do to uh, all for? Actually, uh, wait, wait. Flank? I'm sorry. I apologize. Um. Oh. What do I you want have to do? I want to move here. All right. Yeah, I was going to do that. Okay. <laughs> for your turn. It's now your turn. Wow. Doesn't really matter now. Jordan's going to go back a bit more and cast all dead on this one. <laughs> okay. So, wisdom. He rolls a six. And Ew. you kill him, causing him to explode on Morks. It's and dead. So, Morks, make me a constitution saving throw. It is poison damage, so you have advantage. All right. Constitution. You take, so that's halved, halved. So you take two poison damage in total as this thing explodes next to you. Not bad. He will then move hey, over yeah. here and then he's done. All right. So, Glass, it is now your turn. Uh, this guy recklessly attacked, right? Yep. So I don't even need to recklessly attack, and I have a plus two from flanking. All right, great. So I have advantage. Uh, a 17 to hit for 28. All right, he takes the 28 damage. And he is still not quite bloodied, but he is looking battered. All right, another one. Uh, 23 for 27. Well, 25 for 27. Goodness, that is quite a hefty chunk of damage. And now he is looking bloodied. Quite bloodied now. Perfect. Uh, that's the end of my... Tur uh, that's a 25 I... to hit. God. I'm going to move right here. All right. Uh, Real can move around the other way if he needs to. All right, yeah, that's the end of my turn. And this guy is now going to dart over in this direction, coming this way, oops, and moving right here. And he is going to attempt to attack Glass, rolling right. a 13 on the hit and missing. Perfect. And now it is Mork's turn. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to move over here, and I'm going to chuck my javelin at. One. All right. Rule twenty gonna gonna not let you do it again. Oh my god! Yeah, okay, plus five to hit. So. 20. <laughs> That's a natural yeah, twenty. Cool. Right. So roll two d six. Okay. Mark, where's your sword, man? So that is five. <laughs> I just have to get closer damage. because it's going to load at me. Oh, okay, five plus sure. three damage for a total of eight, dropping him by half of what he had left. It looks. I think I had three more because of my strength modifier. Yes, that was the total. You rolled a three and a two for five damage plus three for eight. Okay. And. It is now this guy's turn as he is going to recklessly attack Real behind him. Doesn't like being stead behind. Son of a bitch. So he rolls two 13s on his first attack. He rolls a 9 on his second attack. And a, another 16 on his last attack as he swings at you wildly. Let's see. What Real. is your AC? 18. Uh, it's 18. Mm, none of those touch you. Wonderful. Yep. Owl, what are you going to do? Uh, save me. 
All right, the owl will, having been here, will go to this guy, uh, give advantage to the next attack, and move this way. Okay. Then it is now Lenari's turn. Perfecto. Um, she is going to great bonfire that bitch. All right. So the save is a dex. And his toes are looking toasty as he fails. Toasty. Nice. And then fire seed the bitch. And he is just barely hanging on as that fiery seed sticks into the side of his cranium, causing fiery little liquid blood to drip from it. I'm only crap damage into my turn. Yeah, that's typically how I feel too whenever I try to hit things. <laughs> it is Tim's turn. Alright, Rocket uh, does not hit here. He, that orange dude is within the range of his glaive, and he's gonna poke it. Poke. Poke. Oh. You do not poke him, unfortunately. Oh, these guys have ACs that are garbage too. All right. He'll move back you. one, and that's his turn. You somehow managed to poke the ground and not him. I feel bad. I feel good. I, I, I damaged yeah. the ground for three damage. Right. And it's your turn. You know what? Rio's going to go here. And, uh, fuck. <laughs> and apparently, he realized he might not be in the best spot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> do I have something? Uh, Real's not going to do that. I'm sorry, Glass. Or Wombo Galvo can't happen right now. Don't worry. It, I don't want you to move. You're good. Yeah. Uh, Real will stay there and make an attack on Big Boy. All right. He is All a right. reckless man. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. I've got a thing I can do. Hold on. Uh, where is it? I want to ping it. There it is. Green Flame Blade. Okay. Nice. So there you go. He's going to attack Big Boy there. And make an attack roll. For so 17. you deal, you deal do let's six, say, damage. six damage to the big guy. To and the, the other guy... guy erupts into an explosion of nasty, gross stuff. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw again, Glass. Yep. All right. You take four poison damage, and Sweet. this guy also takes the four poison damage. Sweet. Nice. And that and so that's real, your turn. real will end its turn where he's standing. All right. Riordan, it is now your turn. Does this one looks like, looks like it's going to explode? He doesn't look very explodey compared to the others. Riordan is kind of brave. He's going to come next to him, pull out his short sword, and <laughs> strike. <laughs> I okay. Unfortunately, somebody moves, so I can't get the plus two to hit. It is a straight roll, and you do hit him for seven piercing damage, shanking him in the side. That's my turn. Wow, Riordan, that's unlike you. He looks very, he looks very close to dropping down. If Glass does not somehow manage to roll two ones, then he should be fine. <laughs> All right, uh, I don't even need to recklessly attack. I got plus two as well. Uh, a fourteen to hit. That definitely is more than enough to kill him. Perfect. That is 30 damage. How do you kill him? I cut his head clean off. <laughs> uh, he does not really have much of a head to well, cut off. Well, then I cut him in Part half from top to bottom. <laughs> there we go. He Perfect. falls in half between the three of you. Blood kind of sporting back on real, unfortunately. Oh. But and killed. that is combat. <laughs> So, very impressive dissertation. Now maybe we can get some goddamn race around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Were you able to look around the area and see if there might be any kind of resources in here? Oh, look, there's more of these lights. Whoops. So, Tim as, begin, also look around, look. as you begin looking around, unfortunately, this area looks like it has already been picked clean from the last time people came through here. The little altar that's sitting there is devoid of anything but small chunks of iron that aren't worth anything. They are barely the size of a finger ta- of a fingernail. Oh. Uh, the other people would presumably be our party, like our guild? The first group of guild people who came through here, yes. Gotcha. Alright, Rio will instead um, close the doors and be like, okay, so you guys want to take that rest here? Or... Yeah, this will be nice. There's some beds right yeah. here. I mean, some sleeping bags. So yeah, I'll, I'll take your rest. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna study my spell book a little bit. All right, everyone, roll your short rest stuff that you do. I really wish we had a. Bomb. I would like to say I haven't taken damage this mission. <laughs> Same. Well, that I have been using spells now. Riordan, you took a fireball. All right. You are correct. I did. I got better. (laughs) 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 The place is now off, by the way. So, that brings you all up to... Two hours and 30 minutes. Actually, that'd be three hours and 30 minutes as you have taken your short rest here, too. Dang, guys. Guys, I think we need to go into the uh, the big room. Let's do Fuck it. it. Let's do it. This is, prime, this is the prime not time to do it. So. Yeah, and if we keep going around, we're just going to keep finding empty rooms. I think, I think if we go in, it's going to have big rewards in there. Yeah. We tried to go in, and there was oh, no way. Yes. Big rewards. No, it's this room that uh it collapsed on you while you were trying to walk through there and we gotta go this way and then we gotta go back so we back, gotta go back. here yeah we gotta take quite the do well we can go through this way that's probably the best route to not hit rooms that have already been hit yeah so let's just try to go through yeah it's the last chance to get to still have some spells and uh, if we need to get out of here, make sure you guys get near me, and uh, I'll say the magic words. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Blank, blank, Give me blank. A second. Which area are you guys going to? Can you ping it again, real quick? The gold area. All right. <clears throat> so you begin making your descent <clears throat> deep, deep into the core of this strange, ruinous location where you begin to hear a hum in the air, a loud sound echoing through everything that seems to just echo in your ears uncomfortably so. Let me just... It is like something is scratching at the back of your minds, and it doesn't feel good at all. This has to be where they did the ritual. Yeah, that that would make sense. Something feels like it's creeping through your spines as you enter through this area. You can see, though, it's not here. You can see blood on the floor right here, where no doubt someone was very horribly injured recently, as this blood is dry and somewhat new-looking. Hmm. Where's the blood? I can't see it on the map. <clears throat> the blood, this time, is not actually on the map, but it is something that was left over from the last time someone came through here. <laughs> Seems like this is pretty dangerous. Definitely. I never uh, try to hold the door this time, but not going to be the door. The door is closed. 
I can see that <clears throat> quite open indeed. Yes. Now, what may be laying down the hallways? Send the owl again. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for that idea. <laughs> As you all say that, you hear something. There is no need for you to send the owl. I already know you're there. Yeah, but we don't know where yeah, you we don't are. Know where you are? <laughs> it just seems to echo in your minds. <laughs> hey, uh, guys. So, uh, we might want to turn <laughs> turn around. Once again, we're scaring ourselves for nothing. What could it possibly be? All right. I mean, why do you why are you saying to turn around though? Like we just let's died. let's just go. Let's do it. All right, I'll, coming far. I'll let you know how bad it is. So as you <laughs> stare into that room, let's see. You see a large spinning power turbine in the center of the room, slightly suspended in the air, with a large oh. crystal in it. And you see this strange-looking multi-eyed creature that seems to be attached to a rather thin, small body under it. And it slowly turns to face you as you enter the room, um, <clears throat> Steel. I have been watching. I am surprised to see you make it here so soon. But I guess those creatures aren't really much of a challenge, are they? Can you just kill it already, Glass? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks to be flying. I know how well I do a flying thing. <laughs> he is floating in the air. Uh, how far? Tim, can you move over a bit? <clears throat> I shall move over a little bit. <laughs> Do I have permission to burn it? <clears throat> he is... Always. He knows that you are all here. You would not have any surprise or anything. If you wish Where to attack I... now... I think it would be a better idea to uh, get further go? in. Yes, if you wish to attack him now, then you hold will on, hold to roll on. If he wishes to attack us, it has to come out. How tall is the door? It is we not don't large necessarily effort. know how we can attack us. I mean, look at this blood on the floor. <laughs> what makes you think that it needs to get anywhere? Well, you fire arrows at it, and then you hide behind the door. And then we'll uh, have to blast <laughs> the door. Smart enough not to just try to plink us from the door. It'll just wait. Yeah, and we can plink it. I don't want to go inside polite, another room again. Especially As if, in, if we go inside the room, can the melee, melee people reach it? That's the question. <clears throat> I can reach it from here. Really. But we'll at least be spread out. I don't mean the range, I mean if it's flying. Can you guys reach it? You were all taking your t sweet time, aren't you? <laughs> I say Why we don't just you come tell you and say that to our face. <laughs> I think I'll be fine here. Roll initiative. Thank fucking God this kill us thing already. Uh, so, right. <clears throat> oh, as Are we going in? Yes. As initiative right. begins to be rolled, let's see here. You see <clears throat> that a shadowy figure begins to appear in front of him as something else is also in the room along with him. He seems to summon it with a magical little whisper in some unknown language. And roll him. And reveal this guy right here. Can't see anything. So it looks like glass. Wait. No way. Aha. Uh -huh. So we have to do this real quick. Descending. And this strange thing standing in front of him seems to be the most agile creature for the time being. And it is going to step forward. And you see it. It holds its shield up taking the dodge action on its turn right Stop. here. It looks very heavily armored and quite hard to hit. Glass, it is your turn. 
All right, if we're going in, we're going in. Make sure to get around me if you want to get the hell out of here. All right, let's see here. I mean, he's taking the dodge action. That's bonus action rage. Uh, let me get behind him, actually. I can do that, I believe. 30, 35, 40. Perfect. And uh, let's recklessly attack. All right. Oh, no bless, but 23 you to want, hit? Um, that would be with dodging. It would be a normal attack. You would have missed with your 18. All right, right, right. right. It's not blessed anyway. No, so you would have missed a, with a 14. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. 18. And once again, you would have missed as you swing at this heavily armored creature and it blocks you with its shield repeatedly. Yeah, fair enough. That's the end of my turn. Tim, it's your turn. All right. Uh, I can't see what's going on, so I've got to move forward. 10. Come here, Mr. Torch. All right. We have this dude here. All right, I'm going to not block the door. So that was 10, 15, 20, 25 there. There you go. Now I can see everything. Uh, okay, so before I go in there, I'm going to be right here, and I'm going to cast Bless on Glass on myself and on uh, um, Rio. Thank you, thank you. And so, there you go. Dude. And Doot. You're concentrating on Bless now. Indeed, is that your turn? Indeed. That is my turn. It is the owl's turn now. It's not the owl's turn. It's my turn. Wait. Oh, why aren't you on the oh, tracker? Well, the owl below me, so I rolled the on, on her token. My bad. You know what? I'll just roll initiative for the owl. The <laughs> owl's number two initiative. Yeah, okay. I'm going to roll my uh, uh, initiative and change it back to a 16. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with the 21. It's a 16. Well, now you wouldn't want a 21. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So, uh, gosh darn it, roll 20. I'll have to drag you up then. Your wait. Why is the owl at the top of the initiative when he's got a 2? What I would suggest is drag the owl to the bottom. You just have to skip the turn so you get to Lenari. Yeah, yeah. it's in order now. So, Lenari. Okay. Um, she is going to move thirty foot forward. Or like right there. Um, now Paris has a question. Yes. On my wildfire spirit, it says I have to use a bonus action to command it. Could I use an action to command it? Um. Wh- why? What would you plan on doing with your action by commanding it? Because I could action command it, then flame blade the bitch. Because <laughs> I was reading flame blade, and flame blade takes a bonus action to cast and a bon- bonus action to bring it back to your hand. Well, um, it's a bonus action to create the blade, and it's an action to attack. An action to throw, but it's also a bonus action to bring it back into your hand. Because if I throw it at the main dude, it appears back in my hand as a bonus action. But you still have to summon it with your bonus action, and then you have to attack. And then no, you I know. Have to so bother. Basically, my plan is, is I don't know if I want to do this, because I could use my bonus action to summon it, right? But if I throw it with my action, I'm going to have to use my bonus action to command it back. So if I, like... Action throw it, bonus action that turn command my spirit. Ne- next time I sp- my next time my turn rolls around, action command spirit, bonus action bring blade black, bring blade black. Uh, bring- I think I understand what you're getting at. Um, huh. it's if very not specifically a bonus action, but in this case I'll allow it. Yay! It seems interesting. Yeah. Don't expect other DMs to allow that. <laughs> I know. It's just, I didn't know Flame Blade was a bonus action. Because if not, I was planning to use Flaming Sphere. But Flame Blade is cooler. So, uh, action, first off, is going to be... No, better. Bonus action, use um, Flame Blade. Summon it to my hand. Alright. Um, action, throw right at the bitch. 
The big guy or the smaller guy? Big guy. Yeah, I got the small. Okay. Guy. And flump. Nice. And unfortunately, <laughs> that does not hit him as you throw it, and the fire is briefly pushed back by some force field around him. Uh, sadness. End of turn. Rio, it is your turn. Well, I guess I'm going in. Um, let me see here. Uh, fuck. That's a big fucker. <laughs> <laughs> an ugly guy. Um, could I potentially, like, I don't know, roll or Connor history or something to see if I can find out anything about this creature? I'll tell you what you need to find out is we need to kill I'll, it. I'll <laughs> allow you to do that later. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess uh, I will um, go ahead and this thing looks sufficiently eldritch, so I'm gonna go ahead and cast protection from you and good. All right. Like so. so let's see. And I will use this as a little thing for you using that. All right. And I will uh, move here. And as my bonus action, I will play song. All right. So this guy will float. Will float over here. And you see his eyes begin to glow a little bit. And he looks towards uh, Tim and says, I would rather you don't do that. And he shoots some strange ray at you that I need you to make an intelligent saving throw against. Oh, okay, okay. Oh shit, insane. <laughs> so you take 16 psychic damage, and I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. You maintain your concentration on the ability, but then he is going to turn and look at Glass. And Glass, I need you to make me a charisma saving throw. You All said it was right. 16 points of damage, right? Yes, 16 points of psychic damage. Thank you. Uh, I'll uh, go so, ahead and use my thingamajiggy to reroll that. Okay. Fanatical focus. And I do have bless though. I'm so you are struck in the back by a beam, but you feel yourself begin to give way to it until you use your fanatical focus to repel this strange sensation. And that Phew. will be the creature's turn on this round. Riordan, it is your turn. Now Riordan's gonna move over here. Be unable to see anything. Move away. Goddamn torch. Move over here. Uh, eh? so what's this one? Is it is this, this strange. It is. You <laughs> just see one creature in there. One very heavily armored-looking creature. Huh. Sure. I will. Uh, bonus action. Cast my spirit. All right. You can cast your spiritual weapon at him. Let me see how 60 feet be right. And your attack doesn't even get close to hitting him. That's fine. And then I will raise my shield in the air, invoke the name of Coralone, and channel divinity, uh, hardness divine power. And I'll get two right. of my first level spells back. Nice. That is my turn. Level one spells. That is the reward instead. So that is half your proficiency bonus. It can be no higher than half your proficiency bonus rounded up. So, yep. Okay. 
Riordan. It is Mork's turn now. All right. I can't do much, but I can move up here. I can space right here. So, uh, what's that? There's a monster in front of glass. Yes. Sure is. Why is the owl over there? Oh, that's a spiritual weapon. Yeah. All I can do is chuck my javelin at the monster in front of glass. All right. That does not hit. It bounces off of his armor. Oh, but I'm blessed, so I get another D4, right? Yep. It wouldn't hit anyone. It would not have hit anyway. Oh, okay. He has a pretty high armor class. You are not there. blessed, actually. Oh, yeah. You give it to Reuel. So. Owl, hmm. what are you going to do? Uh, I can no longer see my owl token. Uh, can I have a vision on it? Um, let's see. Silly little owl. Hold on. I think I got it. I mean, there we go. It's a little weird owl, but it's going to go in here and, ooh. Well, I guess we'll... Get that one. Oh, you <laughs> probably can't get advantage on that one. Can it and reach then... him? Let's see. So, pretty sure. It's got 60 feet of, um... The thing, so. So let's see. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, I can definitely reach him. Yeah, and then he will move this way. You know, we are familiar today. All right. So, this guy is going to move around um, glass, and he is going to take the dodge action again. All right. How do? Glass, it is your turn. You have advantage on your first attack, which is cancelled out by his dodging. Hmm, that's pretty annoying. I mean, he's bait. Really, he's bait. Yeah, exactly. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty good. The thing is, now I'll have disadvantage to shoot this guy, because I'm right behind this dude. Hmm. I don't want to necessarily take an opportunity attack. Uh, I'll take, uh... You can always just crit. Yeah, but he's not even doing anything. He's just standing there. <laughs> so... That's true. He's just standing there. <laughs> Menacing. <laughs> like, I don't care if he hits me. Like, what's he going to do? It doesn't look like it's magical. Like flaming or anything like that. This guy's a more bigger threat. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll step back to like right here and then tell these guys to move back a little bit so he doesn't so get. This guy will take a swing at you, rolling a 24. Um, let's see. That is 10 plus 1 plus 8 plus 10 for a total of <laughs> 28 damage. What type of damage? That is slashing. All right, so 14. All right, well, screw that guy then. I'll move back up and I'll recklessly attack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You miss. Uh, that's a miss. Uh, 25. That does yeah. hit, though. Dang, ow. So that does cleave into him for some pretty hefty damage. Is that a magical weapon? Of course it is, man. That's a Winter's Dark Bite, baby. Yeah. So, let's see. That is 17 damage. It hits him pretty hard, actually. You do a pretty good chunk of damage to him. All right, cool. That's the end of my turn. All right, Tim, it's your turn. All right, I am going to play defensively, because I am limited with my spell slots. Uh, could you describe this guy the glass is uh, tangling with? Does he look organic? Is he made out of... Uh, he looks very he looks very metallic looking. Yo, don't worry about this guy. <laughs> Go after that guy. I got... No, but that's the thing. With Shatter, if he's made out of metal, it gets a bonus. 
you won't he's this guy's twenty five feet in the air. Alright. Uh I will ca- has the guy big the guy in the sky been taking any hits yet? He has not taken any damage yet. Then I will use Sacred Flame. Okay. Garbage. So let's see. And actually, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll use a spiritual weapon as well. He rolls a 15 on his save. And let's see. So that is a 10 plus 4. That does not hit him, unfortunately. I'll put it right there. Okay, apparently my spiritual weapon is in high. <laughs> yes, don't worry about that. <laughs> Owls everywhere. <laughs> is that your turn? That, uh, it's a standard and a bonus, and I'm just going to shift them over here a little bit further away. That is my turn. Right. Lenari, it is your turn. So, um, we both got Flame Blade wrong, by the way. Mm. It's not a ranged deck. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I was thinking it, that, but... No. It's a stupid spell. Um, I hate it. Um, <laughs> so she's going to have something to her hand. And is going to bum rush this fucker. Okay. Wish I would have cast oh, he, Flaming Sphere. Bop! He is dodging. And unfortunately, your attack does not hit as he is dodging and weaving through attacks with his armor and shield held up and ready. Okay. Please tell me you got something to do with the other guy. Me? Yeah. I have something. All right, maybe go for him. All right. Is that real? All right, real will go over here. And right there. And go ahead and try to firebolt onto this thing. Okay. Maybe try not to plaster too much. So, so you me- do hit, and you see him recoil slightly as he takes the eight fire damage, but it is a minuscule amount, it seems. He is barely perturbed. Damn it. All right. Does it look like he resisted that? Does not look like he resisted it. Got it. He's just a tanky fucker. Okay, uh, I guess that's my fucking turn. Here so, we go. He's going <clears throat> to fly five feet up into the air, and he is going to target Tim again. Let me just roll a few things real quick. Oh, I accidentally refreshed roll 20. And that was being a B. So he'll fly five feet up into the air, and then he'll fly this way, ten feet, and target Tim again. So, Tim, I need you to make me another intelligence saving throw. Bam! And you take Tim's 31 smart, points of psychic damage. What? 31 points of psychic damage, and you are Ooh. down. Good night, guys. See ya. So, let's see, you are down and everyone loses bless, unfortunate. And then he is going to look at real, and another beam begins to form at his eyes. Let's see, Uh real, I need you to make me a strength saving throw. Strength? Yep. Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> so let's see you are restrained by a strong te- telekinetic grip that wraps around you and let's see he's going to lift you up into the air 30 feet dick and then he is going to drop you on the ground. What a dick! So, so does that mean he's not restrained at least? He is no longer restrained, but he is prone. Do I? Can I make an acrobatic to land on my feet? Let's see. This is all happening very, very quickly. Let's see. 
So you take seven points of bludgeoning damage as you hit the ground, and I need you to roll me a, uh, what is it? A concentration check. Oh, okay. Remember, you don't have bliss anymore, but you do make it. Oh, Jordan, it is your turn. <clears throat> oh, boy. Oh, wait a minute. Morse, do you want me to get him, or would you get him? Yo, get up here. <laughs> no, boy. I'll... I have one spell slot left, so I can get him. Uh, I'll get him. Uh, Jordan will come next to him. But first, he will use his bonus action. Can I attack first with my spiritual weapon and then move it, or do I need to attack? It is part of the action, well, the bonus action to attack is moving it. Mm -hmm. uh, can I actually reach it now? It's 30 feet high, correct? Yep, it is, 33, it is 30 feet high in the air. Well, I'm going to bring the spiritual weapon as close as possible to the beholder. And with my main action, I will cast Cure Wounds on Tim. All right. So, Tim, you raise up with nine hit points. Oh, thank you. And then I will move, I think, only here. Because that's what I can get. Stop going down. Right. Morks, it's your turn now. All right. I'm going to move up. Oh. What? Okay, I'm gonna move here. And. I don't really see too much I can do, so I'm just gonna take the dodge action. Okay, so you start dodging. And the owl, what is the owl going to do? Uh, the owl will. Go here, give advantage, and then fly, that's 40 feet, and then into here. All right. <laughs> so, it is this thing's turn, and it is going to attack real while he is down. Son of a... Yeah. With a 20 on the first hit, dealing 5 plus 7 uh, slashing 20 damage. 20 does not hit. Huh? 20 nice. does not hit. Ah. But does a 25 hit you? Uh, I will use my reaction to shield. Hell yeah. All right. I'm you in. have avoided a rather significant amount of da damage, and he is no longer dodging. Glass, it is your turn. All right. Reckless attack, baby. Aww. You do not hit him. Ah. ah, but you do hit him on that second attack for 23. seven, twenty-three damage. He is now looking pretty bloodied. Yo, just leave this guy to me. <laughs> Get rid of the huge guy. Tim, you are on the ground as you have just been brought back. All right, stand up from prone. That's 15 feet. Uh, bonus action, gonna have my thing fly over to this thingy. Gonna do a spiritual weapon attack on it. Your spiritual weapon would have disappeared when you fell unconscious. Nope, it, it would not. It's not concentration. Well, it's not concentration. Yeah. But does it stay around if you are unconscious? It stays, unconscious? It it stays is... around regardless of what happens to me. Yeah. That is quite interesting. All right. I can link it to you if you like, want to make sure. Nah, it's a well, it's, I mean, it's pretty well known. Mm. All right then. He is 30 feet into the air. Right. Okay. So, ooh, that does hit him. Oh, let me a, turn off my blast, though. Sorry. Dealing a rather chunky amount of force damage to him. But he is still looking pretty sturdy up there. That is fine. That's his bonus action. And he still has 15 feet of movement. He's going to play defensively. And... Gonna try and block his line of sight on him. Move over here. Still can see him, but you know, for next turn. Uh, as a standard, he's going to do total dead on him. Oh, wait, he's really far away, isn't he? I don't think he can reach him with total dead. Uh, so, no, 30 feet in the air, I think he can make it with 60. 
No. Yeah. So. Yeah, he can he, make it. Okay, total dead on him. And he rolls a 22 on that wisdom saving throw. Holy shit. Uh, whoa. Didn't do anything about it. Anyway. one damage. All right. That is his turn. Lenari, it is your turn now. Okay. Um. Uh, she is going to summon a wildfire spirit hovering right next to this thing. All right. So, deck save, save. And he rolls a 15 on the save. Okay, that's fine. Uh, bonus action, this thing is going to flame seed it. And that does hit him, dealing a pretty good 8 damage of fire to him. And he sees he is recoiling a little bit, looking battered and bruised. Hey, Lunari's going to swivel to give glass plus two, and end of her turn. Real, it is your turn. All right. Real's going to stand up. Um, hmm. I need to look at the spell right now. Right. Hold on. Let's see how I'm going to do this. No, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Um, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to... I'll take the attack of opportunity. Uh, you know, like damage damage so yeah. he rolls another 25. <sighs> Whoa. You take 20. How long does shield last? You take 20 damage. It would have ended at his turn, at the start of his turn. 20 damage, yeah. Oh. Well, it's a good thing I still have my bonus action. Ah. <laughs> uh, Ooh. Oh, wait, make a con save as well. Yeah, I gotta make a con save. Wait, does this guy not count as um, aberration or anything? The thing that hits you does not count as an aberration. An undead or an elemental? Nope. Nope, he's just a dude? Yep. What a fucker. <laughs> All right. I mean, he saw what he did last time. <laughs> Why would... Oh. <laughs> I'm just, I just had to... I had to try. Uh, okay, so constitution save. Yep. Um, and no you sustain it. Goodness me. Nice. You do not have the bless anymore. Remember that. I don't have the bless, but yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. S- bonus action, second win. Come on. All right. Let's see. What do you read? Money. Two, Two hit points. <laughs> Two hit points. You're not going to save me, but it's, you know, it's a thing. All right. And uh, action, I'm going to firebolt on this guy. Right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, firebolt. 23 for seven. And with that seven, he recoils once more, and he is... Not quite bloodied still, unfortunately. All right. Um, that's going to be my turn. All right. So it is his turn now. And let's see. He's going to look at Grass, and he says, Oops. He's going to look at Glass, and he's going to say, Please, this is enough of that. And I need you to make me an intelligent saving throw. As he fires a strange beam at you. Wait, that's illegal. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Holy, Holy shit. Hey, <clears throat> take 20 damage on a half still. All right. <clears throat> and he is then going to move this way. And use another eye ray. <clears throat> He's going to use another eye ray on real. I need you to make me another Fuck. strength saving throw. Fuck. <laughs> and same <laughs> just like the first. All right, He's guys. going to lift you 30 feet up into the air and drop you down. For 13 damage. Yeah, I'm down, guys. As unfortunately, 
your concentration is broken. And does your blade song end as well? Pretty sure it does, yep. Jordan, it is your turn now. Morsk, I need to get the people up. I need to do something else. Riordan's gonna raise his shield. God, roll 20 is moving. Then uh, cast Bliss on himself, on Team, nice. and on Glass. So, let's see. Red and Tim, you are all blessed now. You will also move over here. Not too far. And he will use his bonus action to move the speedy weapon, which should be in range now. <clears throat> if it was kind of lagging behind him, it probably won't be able to catch up to him this turn either. Well, I was almost next to him. Don't make me do math again. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't close enough to attack him this time, it probably won't be close enough to attack him this time again as he has moved another 20 feet. Yeah, but he moved 20 feet in not straight away. He moved like this. So oh, I can wait, just I move diagonally. Ha -ha! Oh, that's right. I, I don't know how high your spiritual weapon is, but all right. Go give him a whack. Let me activate my blade. I don't think he's gonna count anyway. I'm... It's not gonna count. It should yep. count. Yeah, but the script doesn't. And oh, you actually, hit what? him for five force damage. And as he is Very pounded nice. by your spiritual weapon, he is now looking bloodied in the air as bits of tentacles fall off of his floating form. Ah, uh, that would be my turn. <clears throat> Morks, it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna move over here, and I'm gonna cast um, Cure Wounds on Rio. All right. Nice. Real. Let's see how much you heal by. To go through. I am not seeing it, unfortunately. I heard it go, but I didn't. I don't see it either. <clears throat> oh, oh, okay, there it goes. Ah, so you gained eight hit points. Real. Congratulations. Nice. You're prone on the ground again. This time you are not bleeding out, thankfully. Oof. Are you Oof, going to do sure. anything else on your turn, Morks? Or is that um, it? Yeah, that's my turn. Owl. All right, Owl will. Let me zoom out so I can do things with Owl. Owl will give advantage on that guy. Again. And then. Which guy? Run away over here. All right, it is the Harbinger's turn, and he is going to first attack Lenari with his sword, rolling a 24 for 10 plus 13 slashing damage. Oh, 10 plus 13, you say? Yes, 23 slashing damage. And he will attack one more time for a 25, dealing 14 damage in total. 7 plus 7. And <clears throat> Lenari falls to the ground. Okay, so I have a question. I had a plan, and I just wanted to know if it would have worked. My plan was hold action, have Lenari jump, spirit come down, flame teleport up to the weird top eye thing and hit it with flame blade. I mean, I would have allowed it, uh, acknowledging the fact that you would have fallen to the ground. Yeah, I, I would have done it even with one HP, but you killed Grass. me. Grass, it's your turn. All right, recklessly attack. All right. Yeah, you have advantage on the first time. Uh, I mean, I have. If you want to get all the attacks, I have. To attack. That's what it's. Don't yeah, help it's me with fine. that one. Uh, uh, twenty-four and... to hit. Or 20. Oh, let's see. So that is. Oh wow! That is exactly enough damage to kill him. Oh, yeah, perfect. Perfect. And you see him get and... crunched with your blade as you lop off his head. 
and you see a black, ickery liquid spill out all over the ground. Uh, how unfortunate that guy's flying. I'll just blow my longbow and shoot him. All right. So About you hit feet. for three no bruising damage. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'll uh, potion. All right. I not bad at all. So, with that, it is Tim's turn. Correct? Are you gonna move it all? Who me? Oh, I'm. I'm um, no. I'm gonna stay pretty spread out. Actually, I'll move here. I guess. Kind of. Spread all right. Out. So now it is Tim's turn. All right. First things first is get everybody up. So Lenar, you're gonna get a healing word. Bam. <clears throat> and Lunara, you heal five hit points. You are on the ground. I'm officially out of spell five. blocks. Okay. Uh, and you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, Bonus action heal the ping. My ping looks good. Bonus action was healing word. All, All right. right. Standard is going to be told the dead on our beholder for buddy. Save. Wisdom. And he rolls a 13. Oh, right on the money. And Tim is just going to be strategic and just like, okay, I'll be poking my head out when you guys need me. All right. Lenari, it is your turn. Uh, she's going to stand up. She's going to stand up and be like, oh no, what do I do? Because my second level spell went. And he'd be like, fuck. But instead, it's going to fairy fire the bitch. All right. So, saves Dex. And he rolls a 17 on the save. God damn you. Unfortunate. Run away. End of turn. Real. It is your turn. You are on the ground, too. All right. Real's gonna get up. Back on your feet. Uh, <clears throat> oh, man. Well, this guy's been doing automatic damage to me just all day, so yeah, fuck him. <laughs> Magic missile at second okay. level. Let's roll. One die, and let's see what they get. So what you deal you? three times four. For a pretty chunky little bit of damage. Yeah. 12. And he's looking pretty battered and really beaten up now, but he is still standing, or I guess floating. All right. Um, shoot, I don't have anything else I can do as a bonus action, so I'll just, I'll just stay there. All right. <clears throat> then... He will turn his attention on Roridan. Roridan, as you see him stare at you, and he shoots his strange ray at you, informing you, it is time for you to sleep. And I need you to roll me an intelligence saving throw, Roridan. Uh, a question before that. Is it considered an attack or just a spell? It is... It's considered an attack, technically. In that case, warning flare! Not that kind of attack. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. Is it trying to put him to sleep magically? Or no. Just doing damage? It is okay. doing damage. Roll said intelligence. Intelligent. God damn it. You take 27 Bruh. points of psychic damage. Well, I'm down. And the bless unfortunately ends as Roridan goes down. And let's see here. He's then going to float this way across or above the big machine. And he's going to use his next eye ray on Ryu again. Damn it. And I need you to roll me a constitution saving throw. All right. 
I don't get blessed on that. Uh, Constitution nine. <clears throat> and his strange green beam hits you, and you feel your body lock up, and you are paralyzed. Oh, sorry, you are technically stunned, not paralyzed. So it's not as bad. Not as bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be his turn. Warden, I need you to make me a death saving throw. Yes. Watch it be a natural one. Oh, God. Why would you say that? <laughs> This is a 1 in 20 chance of a tap. just because of that. How do I roll them to? Because I forgot. I um, for here, let me just do this to you real quick. And that should fix it. So. There you go. You should have a little toggle now. Where? Um, on your character sheet, you should see, like, a little thing that says, uh, Toggle Whisper. It should be up near the top. Oh. Public GM. <clears throat> well, that wasn't public. I mean, that wasn't GM, but, hey. <laughs> Mark that down. Is that the successful effect of, like, keep up with it? Morks, it is your turn. All right. I can only move up to here because it's dangerous or rough terrain. Yep. Well, I know what this thing does. The machine in the middle? It mm -hmm. looks like some sort of energy source powering this entire place. Mm. I'm going to chuck a javelin at it. All right, then. <laughs> Unfortunately, your javelin is not enough to pierce this rather <clears throat> bristly looking um, device in the middle. It is a little too short, unfortunately. Is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Owl! All right, the owl will... Hmm. Probably, like, way above the owl. It can't really do anything. I know what the owl will do. The owl will go over here to glass and Ryul will cast protection from evil and good through the owl on glass. Thank you. All right. Um, Lenari is going to suggest something to Glass. She says, get ready. I can teleport you up to it. <laughs> All right. Glass, it is your turn. Get in range, ready. All right, I'll pick up the great sword that I dropped at my feet then. I'll drop my... Do I have range? I don't know what you're doing. Do you need me? To, do you need me to move? Uh, Fifteen feet near it. I can teleport you up. Be ready to fall. Be ready to hit. All right, I'll try my best. It looks like it's thirty feet in the air, though. I jump when I teleport you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I gotta move that owl so I can. I can get right under him. I have to feet him. All right. I'm standing directly under him. I just don't want to talk. All right. And yeah, I'm holding my action to attack. Tim. All right. It's so your turn. Tim will move into the room. That's going to be 15 feet. Bonus action to get his spiritual weapon within range. Going to swing at it with the spiritual weapon. All right. Where are you, Mr. Spiritual Weapon? There you are. Nice. Oh, that is a chunky chunk of damage dropping him very close to going down. I'm going to use a standard and do uh, till the dead on him. All right. And he rolls a 13 exactly on the save again. 
That is fine. And then I'm going to use the remain of my movement to start getting closer to rear them and get his ass up. OK. <clears throat> Lenari. OK, here's She's the plan. She's moving okay. 30 feet right here. She summons the spirit a bit above them to do the initial damage to the bitch. It's 15 feet, right? Yeah, she she summons it 15 feet above him, uh, above uh, Glass and herself, so they aren't caught in the opening fire damage. He rolls a five. Okay, then it would take this much. Ooh. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice! And he is recoiling, looking very burned and kind of starting to. He seems to be almost fading from existence. Okay, perfect. The spirit is going to come down 15 feet to be like 5 feet above Glass and Lenari. Lenari commands her uh, <laughs> Lenari <laughs> commands the spirit to teleport her and Glass 15 feet above. Lenari is going to use, her, use herself as a stepping stool to throw Glass up so Glass can hit it. <laughs> Alright, so Glass rolling it Alright, here we go. Great, Reckless. That's funny. Please. No, I can't remember. Uh, that the hits, Plus and rage. you slay this creature. Hell yeah! Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, so, how do you finish him? Uh, exactly how it was just this. I you, get ready, I jump up, teleport, and slash this thing. Yes, you know, fury you come, of fire and radiant damage. You come down on him with your blade, and you cleave the creature in half you see its eye staring at you for a brief second before its slimy bits fall to the ground sliced in half and you see inside its body is not what you would expect not bones and meat and blood but this void like strange essence as he is fallen to the ground and let me roll this real quick. So, <laughs> do, do I die from fall damage? You take 10 fall damage, and you only fell 20 feet. And glass, you take 12 damage from falling. Wait, hold on. Do I take 10 I damage? Six. I have the six. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, no, Lenari's dead. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, Lenari <laughs> hits the ground with a loud thud <laughs> as glass steps off her head, and you have. <laughs> And you are the first to defeat the bosses at the middle of this location. It it, it was worth it. Nice. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, listen, we're, we're gonna stay in initiative order because we got death savings. Yep. Oh yeah, we got um, two. Oh shit. And so uh Real, I want you to roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh, right, I'm still stunned. <laughs> yeah! Motherfucker! Oh, shit. Even after it's dead? Yep. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, Ten. Yeah. Oh. And you are still stunned. Son of a bitch. Real's just, like, struggling. <laughs> She's <laughs> fucking struggling. Where did the bot go? Did he just get stolen? I think so. <laughs> Bots usually like disappear after like a, a certain amount of time. I Might see. Have to reconnect. Hmm. I'll take care of that in a second. <laughs> As let's see. So Ryu, you're still stunned. This guy is dead. Riordan. I need you to make me another death saving throw. Spirit with despair. Come on, just don't don't roll bad. Yeah, I, need, uh, I can get to you in the next I round. I can't whisper these things, sorry. Don't even see the option. So it should just be on your character sheet. It should say uh, GM public. Or to GM and public. It should be at the very top. Ah. Thank you. All right, mark that down. Mark. Marks, it's your turn. Um, there's not really much. I'm just gonna collect my javelins. There's not really much I can do. All right. So then, what 
What's Yao gonna do? Don't collect like, the gem, um, but go over there and do a medicine check to see if you can like uh, like stop him at least the from dying. Owl, I don't think the owl can do a medicine check. Got it. No, the owl take a free damage. Give it to someone. More than. Would you like to try a medicine Mork. check? Mark, don't you have cure wounds? Don't you have anything? You haven't used any. He actually has used spells. He used a spell oh. to get real up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, all my, I, I, I used all my spells. over here to Riordan and true. like and like <laughs> pick at him, <laughs> giving the help action to whoever's gonna try to help him. Wait, hon, can the owl take think... a potion out and feed it to someone? I'll do that on my turn. Don't worry, I can make it. Actually, interesting. Hey, Morks, I think you can actually reach Lenari. I have no spell slots left. Oh shit! But do you have any potions? No, I have nothing. You use medicine a medicine check. check. Uh, uh, you... Yeah, at least you can stabilize her. Yes, it means okay. she will not die. I only have 25. Uh, he can't get there. Oh, oh he he's a dwarf. Because uh... he's got his small feet. He's like a rat. Last, it's your turn. I'll just I'll move up oh, here. Man. I'm sorry, Lenari, but I need to help uh, Riordan first. Ah, uh, yes, because Lenari. No, stay on. over there. I'm, I have a so, potion. I'm going to feed Riordan. As, as uh, I'm not going to let him Riordan. roll another death Plus, save. I'm as you forward. get close to Riordan, you see that he actually looks pretty close to stabilizing himself. Don't care. Here you go. <laughs> uh, no rage healing. Raging, no. raging, pouring on the potion. Exactly. I like almost breaks the glass. In his Take mouth. the potion. <laughs> <laughs> you shatter the glass with your rage. Did we win? All right. <laughs> yes, we won. God damn it. Are you it's winning, son? His turn. All right. Tim <laughs> makes it over there. And he's gonna pour a potion down her neck. Her neck? Her neck. Sorry, her, her throat. Oh, <laughs> throat. my neck. <laughs> Here, take this potion. <laughs> <laughs> and you regain five hit points, Lenari, and combat is officially over. Hey. Ooh, mm. that had my heart beating for a bit. Ooh, oh boy. Um, oh. Does Ryo eventually recover? Uh, what was that? Did Real recover? <laughs> Real snap out of it. Yes, you will recover now. You are no longer stunned. Uh, okay. Real will use a potion for himself. He has to. <sighs> All right. I, I think we can take a short rest because we still got to make our way out of here. Nice. I literally have zero <laughs> health or hit dice left. Lenari has everything left, and she really wants to take a short rest, please. Yeah, Same. I got you one know. left. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to insist that we take a breather. Who doesn't oh, have anything left? Like, I'm just going to look around and see if there's any gold here. Bless. At least, please. Run. Bless, you have nothing. Oh, um, that's a good yeah. hit dice. So, there is actually, let's see here. Oh, yes. You know, check around and all that. Yeah. Real would like to check around. Do we, um, have to roll anything? Uh, yes. Roll me perception or investigation. I will help with perception and give guidance. All right. So are we doing our short rest or checking first? Investigation? Uh, if it's the investigation, I can't help, but I'll still give guidance. <laughs> all right. So uh, plus twenty four. Is it one person looking, or is it a group again? If it's a group, it's, then can I? Then can it, I? Roll it can be a group thing. Don't worry. <laughs> I was right. just a little right. amused by the double ten there. <laughs> All right, let's give it my best shot. What are we rolling? Oh, either investigation or perception. Oh so, yeah, I'm really... I get a thirteen. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, actually, in this particular case. Tim and Glass, you both notice something a little odd over here in this direction. It looks oh, like... Yeah, funny. Hey, at least and somebody's Mort getting as well also notices something strange over here. The wall looks like there is a very noticeable seam in it, like it can be opened. And on top of that, before any of you start moving, you also notice something else, this strange, almost ethereal-looking essence sitting around the crystal in the middle of the room. Let me move this guy out of the way. 
it seems to be tethered around it, clinging tightly and holding on. Mm -hmm. It's barely noticeable, though. It's there, but it is hard to see. Wow. Uh, uh, and can real? can real swipe at it with this sword? Yes, you can. And for the first time, while you're all down here, you in this particular area, you can hear the Chamberlain speaking again. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we Damn. killed a beholder down yeah. here. You actually managed to... Oh, my goodness. You actually managed to win. Uh, oh, that's, that is incredible. Can you please bring back anything from it that you can and tell me yeah, what yeah. else you see down there? Do you have any ideas on how we get any of this stuff back? We got this hole in the wall here, and then the weird tendrils surrounding this mechanical device. I wish I could tell you more, but... So, real, you attack it, and you very successfully strike it, and it looks like you've cut some of the tendrils off as they fall to the ground and melt into a liquid. And meanwhile, while that's going on, the Chamberlain says... I don't know, any any samples that you can get. A, a tentacle, some liquid, anything. Oh, perfect. Looks like we just got one. Oh. As as he said that, Lenore is like going up to burn it to burn it off into ash and stops. Real <laughs> uh scoop some of the liquid into a uh empty potion bottle that he has. Is there any strange things down there besides the creature? Uh Lots of these weird machines. I said, well, that's fair. Yeah. Make sure you clear out the room completely, though. Don't leave anything. All right. Anything else? So, <clears throat> that is all he has to say to you right now. All right, let me try to break open this uh, wall with crowbar here. You've got a 17 strength, right? Yeah. You don't have to try to break open that door. You can just oh, pull God. it right open. <laughs> Perfect. <clears throat> and it reveals a secret little offshoot room. Oh, God. And see, the tendrils remain there, kind of surrounding the crystal, however. They look to get a little tighter, and the power begins to flicker a little bit as it's been hit. Hmm. Is it possible for a real to just like keep slashing at this thing, trying to like clear out the tendrils, like glass, uh, well, like grass? Oh, you gotta just keep doing that. That's fine. I'll let you do it. And let's see. Sure. So you will inevitably cut all of these tentacles off, and the essence will cease moving. And as it does, you notice the turbine in the middle begin to spin incredibly fast, almost dangerously so. You two probably want to step away from it. Yeah, real well. That's you too, Lenari, unless you like getting slapped by uh, oh, <laughs> big metal blades. Sorry, I... um. Okay. So you both step away as they begin spinning quicker and quicker, and you notice the lights in this room begin to grow more bright everything becoming much more noticeable. And that door that Glass just uh, tore off, you hear a slight, you hear a slight um, shifting sound as what was left of it reveals and drops to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so you have broken the door. Would you like to continue? All right, guys, you got these all uh, rested up? No, yep. yet. Let's go. Hold on. I didn't roll my stuff. I feel like I can get really angry if I try really hard at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that hallway is another door that is closed, but this one doesn't look special at all. It just looks like a door. And... Alright. I won't even bother looking for traps. Let's do this. Yes, as you open it, you are led into this quiet little back room where you see a skeletal figure slumped over in a chair, blood dried long ago under him, and a knife covered with blood sitting there as well. 
And there is an open journal on the desk that reads, this is how it has to be, repeatedly and repeatedly. And on top of that, you notice these strange, like, devices right here and here. They, f they flow with energy, and they seem to be giving off some sort of strange magical power that is creating, that is creating this crystal over here. It is being energized by whatever is going on in here. Huh. Huh. And... It's two endpoints right there and there are both gold. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Lenari's going right up and breaking that shit off. Yep. So as you break that off, I'd like you to make me a constitution saving throw. Okay. And now, this is how we die. I'm not afraid of your magic words, magic man. You are briefly shocked as you break apart this arcane energy. But nothing bad happens to you, thankfully, as you peel the gold pieces off and stuff them into your bag. Oh, no, I was afraid we were going to have to keep digging around for more stuff. And you really now good. have three pieces of gold, and you have spent... So it was 30 minutes, so it is now the five-hour mark as you took your short rest and took your time in here. Shall we just head back? I see no point in continue. Yeah, I think we got the main mission done. We got the optional boss done. I say we jump ship. We, Drain the resources. I'm completely spent. I have no spell slots whatsoever. Yeah, let's I mean, get out of here. here. I mean, I can right, do sure. a two more I mean, we heals. can see what we find, and then uh, if it gets too dangerous, we can just teleport out of here. We still I, have think, the I think just leave. I think everyone's well, kind of spent after that fight. I only have one spell slot left. Let's ask this custodian if he if he's happy with what we have. I mean, we could get extra gold. Think about it. Can we? Yeah. We only have the base amount right now. We so only have the base holder. amount of gold, but we have the other stuff, the silver and the iron we got. <laughs> you have yeah. two iron out of five. You have eight. You have, so you have two silver out of five, eight iron out of 15. You've got the three gold. You have completed the minimum for getting out. Yeah, we're only at the minimum still. We got the bonus here, but that's it. We don't have anything else. Uh, well, we only have three hours left. I say we go find something, and like I said, if it gets too dangerous, just stick by me, and we'll just use the uh, stone. We so, will cast the... Cure Wounds on think? Tim. Is anyone else Sorry, wounded? You... Tim is going to get six healing. No, oh, nice. Oh, thank you. All right. Look at us. We're, look at us. We're fine. Linari, how much HP do you have? Uh, <laughs> Linari's on max. Okay. I think Morgs. we can do one. Maybe we can get some silver. I don't know if we have I've, enough. I, don't, I have no spell sets. No... Nothing. Well, you have a weapon, don't you? Yeah. Lenari is good with heading back and would rather head back, but she can't continue. I would, I'd rather head back. Oh, I say we right. cut our losses, we play it safe. Fine. Let's yeah. go. I don't, if you guys don't feel comfortable with it, then let's go. So, <clears throat> are you going to use the magic stone to get back? I mean, we could walk back, right? I mean, all right, get us the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> And as you speak those words, all of you feel this radiant energy surround your bodies as you are flashed through space and time. And you appear outside the cave next to uh, the Chamberlain, who the first two times he was surprised, but this time he was prepared. He only jumps slightly when you all appear right next to him within five feet almost. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's good to see you all safe and sound. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> um, yes. How I mean, did it go? Well, until we uh, completed the mission, got a bunch of resources, and uh, we killed some creature that was in the central building. 
just uh, destroyed some kind of essence that was keeping the main uh, generator in there from turning. And, we also uh, got this yeah. crystal from some weird dog creatures. It was in a different kind of generator, but yes, <laughs> I'll show him the crystal rod. Very interesting. Please, take whatever we have and we'll return to Lady Wilhelmina if you so desire. All right. Well, so, you guys gave him the thing, right? Yes, he is going to take the crystals and everything else that you brought, and he sticks My them friend. into that bag that he had at his back, and you notice they <laughs> all just seem to slip right in despite their size. I've seen one of those before. But guys, look, we have three more hours left. Actually, no, oh, we, we got. Yeah, now, you got now that we now use you want to do, you want to go back in there? <laughs> no, I don't. you guys want it out. <laughs> don't. I what, don't. What is going on? I said we should stay. I said that we should stay as well, but I guess it was free versus two. We still have three hours. Fine. We can poke our nose a bit. Too late now. We use the stone. <laughs> I'm not going back in there without the stone. <laughs> And plus, it's after midnight here. I'm... Yeah, it is quite late. It is. Yeah. It is also late. That's why Lenari wants to go back. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's get out of here. We've done our job. So okay. we'll get going later somewhere else. You return back to the man, the manor where Lady Wilhelmina excitedly waits to see what you have to bring her. And as you lay out the resources you have, her eyes sparkle like the gold that you have given her. And she smiles to each of you. Thank you all so much. This, this is the, well, it's not the biggest yield that I've gotten yet, but this is the most successful one, definitely. Oh, this is fantastic, fantastic. Yes, yes. I am so indebted to all of you. Thank you very much. Please. Please. She is going to ring her little bell on her desk again, and you see a servant come in with a very large bag that is he is going to drop on the desk, and she is going to fish out some rewards for all of you, which I now, now write in room one. So, no one was in slow mode, right? I, I need to ask that again. Yeah, it's been no a while. I forgot. Okay, so rewards. You all get 140 GP for finding the gold and a bit of the other resources as well. And let me roll on this. So you also gain from the uh, you also gain from her. 1d4 plus 2 unbreakable ammunition. So let's roll that again. So this is a 4 plus 2. So you gain exactly 4 pieces of unbreakable ammunition, which I'm not sure which any of you would want it, but what do all of you use? I use a bow. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> I guess it would be best to decide it when we get to the roll. So, really yeah, I don't really even need it. So, for <clears throat> it's too bad you can't refuse it. <laughs> unbreakable arrows, and <clears throat> the Chamberlain himself also provides you all with a bonus of twenty-five gold. And he also has a special gift for all of you for your hard work. Let's see. Please accept my special gift. And he is going to give you a spell scroll wizard of first level. Though, I guess if any of you have these spells, you can actually use it. It's, it's more than just a wizard spell list. So he gives you a... He gives you a grease spell scroll. Nothing a druid can use. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> well, <clears throat> thank you for these. Uh, definitely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I let glass jump on my body for this. 
Hey, think about the bragging rights we have, though. Nobody else can say they've done this. That's true. <laughs> there was always one kid at the guild just kept kept annoying me, saying how hard this mission was. Kept going on and on about it. Oh, oh this is hard. This is. Hard. So See, that is. 140 plus 25 gold, four unbreakable arrows, one scroll of grease, two badges to everyone, and one badge to glass. Yep. I'm one game away. And now it is time for the wonderful part where I have to now reward roll. Oh man, I love this part so much. Everybody so does. Let's see. DMs and players alike. <laughs> That 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 combat could have gone a lot quicker if I used if I if I'd used flaming sphere against the beholder. Yeah, but it's okay. Like there, hindsight is twenty twenty. Never know. I mean, was it a beholder though? God, it must be like a young beholder. Yeah, if it was a beholder, beholder like. Be beholder like. Beholder, I think we wouldn't have been able to cast magic on it in the first place. We would have been dead like within two rounds. Instantly. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like glass can survive one hit like, with with this, but that's it. <laughs> like, I feel like it was so more of like a uh, it was it was more of like a random kind of aberration. Yeah. In, there's a few like eyeball. No, I'm and pretty sure. While I am doing this reward roll, you can all, you know. Give the feedback you want while I'm trying to write this. Can I do the feedback first? I've had of to go. It is, it is fine, please. I, I have to run a Christmas straw session zero in like 10 minutes. Oh, um, jeez. So, um, I liked it. It was good. It was good, clean combat. You ran it well. Good descriptions. Um, good RP. Your voices were good. Um, combat was smooth. I would have... And there were some ruling errors, but that's also probably on my fault. I'm glad you let your players do what you do what they did, like have uh, free reign and try really wacky, quirky ideas like mean glass. Um, <laughs> that was very yeah. interesting, I gotta admit. That's all I have. Alright, thank you. I shall now dip. Thank you for the game. See ya. It was my pleasure. And up next, I will do Tim, since you are there. Hey. Uh, like I was I said, you ran the fights very, very well. I was thoroughly enjoying combat. Uh, note, I would say is at the beginning, there was a lot of information dump. I would like maybe tone that back down a little bit. Uh, the other thing that is not a critique, but a, a what I would suggest to bring the game a little a step forward is have something relating to the environment. Like, for example, you could have had the fight with the Beholder-like creature, have, like, uh, a like two flowing or, or, like, glass orbs in there that shot lightning between them or something like that. Just something to give the environment a little bit more pizzazz. Wow. Thank you for letting me know that. I will keep this in mind going forward. <laughs> Jesus. So, Jeff, what do you have to say? <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much agree with what everything else is said. Um, I thought it was a little bit hard for a third-level character, though. It, I just kind of felt like I could do nothing like most of the time. And That's because we went for the option. I have a question. Holder, though. Hmm? I have a question about badges. Like, I just got to iron, so... Cool. um. How many badges do I need to get up to the next one? You always need eight badges, essentially, for <clears throat> most of your career. When you, by the time you won't need eight badges to get to the next level, um, well, I don't think anyone's at that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you need another eight badges. You have another two. So you should have ten now, correct? A ten total, yeah. Yep, you just need six more badges and you can reach level four. Okay, and then eight more badges and I'm level five, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, I get it.
Thank you.